video is good so that's that's looking really promising because that's the location so okay so we're recording for public quality control purposes of course so that we can get feedback on this meeting and people can collaborate because we work openly all the time okay so there's a lot of good things we got to go over so first of all little updates where we're at with everything so right now we've got three people five people signed up total so there's two remote and three three on site so one actually one at each location so far which which is incredibly balanced <laughs> um, now so my mentor is working we are going to get that nice promo video but it's happening next week so that's still coming and it's really good uh, that's an update and for chris and tom we've got andreas <laughs> andy yes <laughs> andy yeah. is that what you say Oh, is that my name? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Andreas, Andy, anything that works. Andreas. So he's he's a Nord Nordic hey. guy, and he he works at IBM. He's he's applying for the event planner position, so he's working with us to find instructors. So and he's gonna pipe into this meeting just a little bit to get some feedback from you guys. But uh, I think the main things to cover right now uh, is. Welcome, Andy. Say it again. Oh, I was just saying, welcome, Andy. Oh, All thanks, right. Chris. Cool stuff. So, um, quick updates, what we want to cover in this meeting. So so I'd like to go over, so so we've got, like, what, 20, 20 few days? And uh, time is short. I think there's more people that's going to sign up and all that. Um, what I want to do is... I've got documents for the four days of curriculum that we wanted to actually start filling out. Okay, so this is the common curriculum that we're all sharing, and I'll, I'll point you to those. And then for, for the five days for the projects, I just want to go over the principles of how we'd run that. It's just really quickly, because I think there's some basic ground rules we can cover there. And then, so I, I actually, thinking about marketing for the event, what I ended up doing was... Uh, adding an option, a special weekend option, because thinking about it, it's clear that not a lot of people can sign up for the nine days. Um, but we've done a lot of the one day or two day 3D printer builds. So uh, I actually added an option where people can sign up just for the one or two days. And that requires a uh, so they can participate exactly on the first day. That means getting ship, you know, on site. And for the second day, uh, I got another person. So I've been talking to Luke Layton. He's the guy from the EOMA 60, I don't know if you guys heard, EOMA 68 Libre laptop or modular, computer, modular computers. He's a big guy in the open source world. But I talked to him and he's built printers and he's a, designed a lot of stuff. And take a, by the way, take a look at the last meeting on, on our YouTube channel. Uh, just get a load of what he's doing. He's very exciting stuff, and he wants to collaborate. He wants to be an instructor as well. Um, he's still considering coming to the Texas event, but if not, he lives in Taiwan. And I asked him to do the second day, where in a special weekend track option, we have a chance, like for the two-day people, so the, the two-day weekend short course, we have everybody hack on the original printer to build the 12 inch version of that uh, which i think is completely doable that's a great project for a second day uh, and then people actually get to take the 12 inch by 12 inch printer home with them so i felt that was a great um thing to involve more people for those people who don't have the nine days because nine days seems like heard some feedback that's it's not easy for most people to do that especially at this time so that's that's that um, so and for the people that on a on a short weekend course what I can do in Texas we can have like an after hours session where we give a two hour crash course on some of the skills required so we know we can teach a person free CAD and to do a first print in an hour we've done that several times now um, and but they also. I'm not hearing your audio, Martin. Say it again. Not hearing me. I don't hear it either. Not hearing my audio. Oh, so you're up. 
you're, you're picking over the me now, right? <laughs> See, try one more time. If it doesn't work, I can just pin in actually what I had. Are uh, you saying, Martin? Are you there? Or, yeah. <laughs> You're not Martin, is it okay if I mention um, the parts which I would like some help with from the participants while you work on your audio? Maybe you can do thumbs up or something. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I don't know what to do. Uh... No thumbs up. <laughs> well, yeah, don't. Um, right. Go ahead. Okay, speed is fine. What is going on? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. So before before you came back, I just asked if they could do a short round table to introduce themselves to me. Okay. That we can know when you're back. Uh, okay. We can do that later. Okay. Yeah. There's something weird about this uh, Chromium DS. So I'm on Firefox and it's, it seems to be working. Okay. Two hour crash course. Uh, and I'm thinking that's important for multiple reasons. I mean, we're into massive collaboration and we need to onboard people fast, especially with view of the incentive challenge on the cordless drill. And by the way, uh, I got connected to Crowd Supply. If you guys know what Crowd Supply is, that's crowdsourced ethical open hard, uh, crowdsourced ethical hardware platform. Uh, Crowd Supply. Uh, we got connections there actually through Luke. Uh, so I was thinking like when we do the cordless drill, we can uh, teach people rapidly, collaborate as much as we can, but it's important to be able to get people on board as fast as we can. So that's something we, one of the intents of the STEAM camp is to practice exactly that. How do we, how to become radical super cooperators. Uh, so in the first, so I, I was still talking about the two-day special weekend program. On the first day, so so the schedule is typically like let's keep it to like regular days since it's like t um, nine days of it. That's the theory. I mean, in practice, we'll see what happens. But on the first day, at least, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna break that rule already, because if we do the weekend course, I'd like to spend like two hours that night. So like say seven to nine. And then again, there are issues like how do we co coordinate between Belgium? Because Belgium's not going to do that. It's too late. Um, but seven to nine, crash course on the collaborative literacy. So one hour free CAD to the first print kind of deal. And the second hour is some of the core principles of how do you keep a work log and all those things that, that we do in order to be able to collaborate in a 
massive scale, which means cloud collaborative, real-time tools, as well as basic process management, which is uh, open so anyone can contribute to that on a team. But for that, people have to have a basic literacy of how that works. And that I think we can cover that in two hours so that the people who come for the two days only, they can be fully proficient in collaborating and getting that next, uh, actually a new prototype. Like, you know, we, we try to do that in a steam camp, in a startup camp actually. So in November, we, we wanted to do a couple, at least I wanted to do like, see if we can maybe scale up the D3D Universal. Uh, we ran out of time, but we can actually use the steam camps. Uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity where we get people just right embedded into the collaborative development and they can produce uh, an a next iteration of a prototype which would be awesome so that kind of came up to me as I was thinking about well, how to get more people to sign up for this I think that could be a good deal so anyway uh, just wanted to uh, surprise you with that but that should only add a, are you guys okay with that that more people show up and we can do like there's a separate track on the second day those people that do that they'd be like on their separate track and it would be managed re actually managed by somebody else so actually Luke or somebody else uh, Luke is probably able to do it. Uh, I talked to him, but we would have we continue with the program as as we have in a in a nine day curriculum. Uh, but there would be this just this weekend track that on the second day of it, we've got a remote facilitator, a facilitator running that program. So it's not our responsibility. That's that's going to be happening in parallel, while synergizing uh, somewhat with the rest of the group. <laughs> Are you, are you saying that on day? Are you saying that on day two of the nine-day course, the other people to join? Both day one and two. So there's a weekend option where you can join for one or two days. One day is everyone, everyone's on the same page because it's the introduction. We're building 3D printers. So day one, <coughs> by day one, we have a prototyping 3D printer. And then day two. I think a good value proposition for the people that are attending the weekend courses, they can walk away like after one day, like say people just want to do that. But for the two days, I'm sure maybe some more people want to stay for two days. They get a chance to hack and increase the size of their original printer to, to the one square foot bed. That's quadruple the size uh, from six by six inch to 12 by 12 inch. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, we, need, we, we need to manage the, the ordering of parts. Oh, absolutely. make sure that uh, you know and and we need to also know about you know uh, like a cutoff of when they can the last day they can sign up for so that we can get the program. okay so that was the last item on my agenda here so I want to go through the schedule kids shipping is a big deal okay. so we want to cover that okay that's that's the right now I think the biggest challenge is um, is the kit shipping part because between all of us we we're familiar with enough of the curriculum that we could we could do it, but if the parts don't show up, we're, that's not that's not a successful event. So, okay. Um, only other thing I want. So, kid, let's go to kids shipping, and then maybe Andreas. But uh, only other thing, Tom, is the hotspot. Uh, so probably. So this is uh, Tom's in Texas. Should I just order the hotspot and just ship it over to you so you can test it? I think that that'd be a good idea, and okay. and also. Um, if if you uh, did did find a hotspot device that had an Ethernet port in it, <clears throat> that would be ideal because then I could just take uh, the hotspot and put it outside the shop, and then inside the shop I could just put a Wi-Fi access point in there. Let, let me let me show you what I'm talking about. Right now I'm going to the I'm in the world. Yeah, you're cutting out, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe don't do that now. Um, maybe let's. Hey, Tom. Maybe. Okay, it looks like he cut out. Tom, let's try that. Not with everybody. We can just go over that. Yeah, he's cutting out. See, there's an internet issue there when he w walks away from the house. Okay. Um, let's go, Andreas. But why don't you uh, do your thing? Um, am I mute? No, you're good. All right. Yeah, actually, I did it while you were gone. Um, oh, okay. So <laughs> okay. um, we're all good. Okay, good. Um, so 
if we're good on that, then then I want to go right into the kit shipping part because that's. I think out of this meeting, I do want to go through that. That like make sure we're clear about that, and then also go through. Actually, I want to show you guys the curriculum, all the working documents. So we can get all on the same page as far as filling out the actual content and going over that, and then we should do some practice sessions. Now. Uh, I would propose that we, after we start these docs and get this meeting, like maybe uh, when are you guys available next week? Because we we got to pretty much like rapidly coordinate, make sure that all the curriculums coming into place. Make sure, like like literally, I need to be sending sending parts out like right now to you guys, um, like this weekend. So let's take a look at that schedule. But um, can we? I was thinking maybe check in like like Wednesday next week if you guys are available. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. So 1 p.m. Wednesday? Yeah, it should be like at least once a week or twice a week. Uh, yeah. We need to run into between now and then. Um, yeah. Including, uh, it looks like we had been talking about doing one like intensive run through for yeah. a couple of days. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. That'll be like probably the two weeks before and then another one like just to wrap up any loose ends um, yeah so that's like so, so Wednesday, Wednesday is our next one you think yeah let's does that sound right yeah and this is a good time, yeah, for this is a good time. is this a good time of day for everyone yeah uh, yeah so, uh, it's fine okay. this hour that sounds good so let's go into the um, when, when is this now? Okay, Tom, you cut out. And Tom, I said that um, let's go over the internet stuff later because as soon as you walked away, you cut out. So let's let's take care of that later. But right now, let's go over the kids shipping, which is one of, one of the critical parts. So let me put in a link. Uh, let's actually go very explicitly through the part list. Because there's four things we can do. And let me paste in the link for the part list. So, so D3D Universal. Um, so you can follow this along. BOM. Edit. Take a look at that link. So that's the actual BOM, all right? Um, and there's four things. And um, as we go through this, let's actually work in our work docs. So, so there's, um, let me put you, put you for, in for another link. So now this is the link for the January Steam Camp. In it, I just started four docs for day one through four and then day five through nine. Okay? And there's also a calendar on, on the wiki page. So, so I sent you the wiki page and the BOM. Take a look at the wiki page. Let's look at the calendar, right? So we're at Friday the 3rd. Maybe sh let me share my screen. Can you see it? Yes. Michelle, Tom, and Chris? Yes, and I can see it then. Okay. The third, I'm saying like Monday, I got to ship stuff to you. And then we need to put on, we can edit that doc, but we're, when is our big run through? What, what day do we want to select for that? Uh, I would say like, and then there's an issue for international, like Michelle, like, I don't know what we're going to do if we're going to do, um, if we're going to have a, it can't be the week of the 12th early. It would have to be like, if I would to ship on Monday, 
we're talking about our practice meeting like Thursday. It takes like takes like 10 days. So so we really have to have like a good plan for how we divvy up um, the part shipping because right now it's like it's already kind of late. Um, so Michelle first. Um, have you what's what's your status on build now the universal uh i'm waiting for parts um certain uh, shops were um were closed now for the for the holidays so the the next few days uh, i'm going to uh, get the, the last parts um so yeah um I, I still need at least a week to to, uh, to finish it, but I'm, I've been uh, looking into um, part suppliers uh, for Europe for several things for uh, the printers, because a lot of the the suppliers that are in the bomb uh, don't uh, ship to Belgium. Okay, so we need to, to take Europe in general. So I've I've been making. Uh, um, spreadsheets okay. uh, for for the uh, yeah, for the Arduino, for the power panel, uh, for the Universal also, but that I haven't uh, published yet. Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, now I'm busy with uh, with the DIY Arduino. I have the pieces for the, for that, and I'm so, uh, I started with the assembly. So the next few days, uh, I'm gonna post some results. Very nice. Um, so on the January Steam Camp, let me put in. Uh, let's go to the the day one curriculum doc, and let's make that. No, actually, um, let's see, day one doc. Let's start a a working doc where we capture all of this, the meeting doc. Um, so I'm going to ask, Andreas, can you take this link? I have an assignment for you, Andreas. Can you do this? So this link, can you make a copy of that and embed it at the top of the genu... Uh, at, like above, like in the program, like in the... Yeah, okay, day zero, so under day zero. <laughs> Just create a day zero. I'll create that right now. Um, yeah. Uh, let's take notes. Yeah, because what we want to do is then let's jump right into the bill of materials. So what I'll do is I'll make a copy of that and let's do this. We have to divide the parts into four categories. One is stuff I can drop ship. So if, if we talk about the America location, I think to, to do the whole entire kit, just drop ship, like that's what I wanted to do. But for Belgium, it's going to be really hard. Um, because that's going to take like 10 days international shipping unless you're paying like literally like $500 per kit for fast shipping. Uh, I checked on the prices, at least UPS. I was going to go to the post office and check more on that. But it's pretty expensive to drop to ship if you want to ship fast international. Um, so there's three things. One is we can make things like 3D printing or, or buying locally such as the wood for the base. But between drop shipping and like ordering drop shipping so we can order like I can order for Chris and for me here uh, I could probably drop ship to to Belgium as well but probably we want to have you well, the, buy stuff the like wood locally, and the rods, right? actually uh, the rods and the, and the bolts and stuff uh, it isn't necessary to ship those okay it would keep uh, the weights down yeah. a lot I think um, okay and in costs so uh, the electronics um, and uh, yeah, maybe some of the printed parts but actually that isn't really necessary either because I can print them here um, so yeah mostly the electronics the motors and stuff uh, I can buy some locally here I could but uh, then uh, it won't they won't be the same probably yeah so um, okay yeah so let's go through, so I just made a copy of the, so I made an international D3D universal bomb. And in it, um, I think what we need to do is make, 
Uh, let's get rid of these last three columns. <coughs> And let's let's do uh, on column E. So let's basically go through the entire list and get very specific here because we, we can't be missing a single part. So let's go USA, USA. So let's well. Okay, let me share. Let me share this doc too, so you guys can go in there. So so we can all do that. So let's divide, basically take this bomb and divide it for Texas and then Virginia uh, I don't know what's going on, I'm, I've got a 200 meg line and I can't even edit this doc uh, Having some computer issues. Okay, there. So, Virginia. And then Belgium. So let's let's pretty much get this started. And these things we can pretty much erase. So let's simply go through this pretty um, pretty rigorously. And actually, let me put. Let me make copies of these two and paste them. Insert two columns right so I can save them. Okay, and therefore we can go from scratch on, on the Virginia. And Virginia is going to be largely the same. Okay, but let's let's do this. So, nuts. M6 by 18. How are we doing it? McMaster, couple of days, no problem. That can be... Um, so what I'll do is put a column here, and and what we want to do is divide between drop ship, local buy, and local make. Okay? So, insert column right. So, method of... Pre procurement um, I would say so we're good for a uh, dropship is the easiest like that's you go online and you don't have to take any effort and it arrives a few days later um, Michelle can you do that is that those available? Uh, well, the the bolts. Uh, oh, what, what was the question? So, what I'm proposing here is we go through each item, each single item, and make sure it can be procured for the meeting for the the event. So the question is, yeah. can that be? So item number one, what's the method? Drop ship, local buy. Or make three equals make. Well, can you uh, can you send me a link to to this document? Uh, oh, you guys don't have it. Okay, here. Um, no. The... Okay. Here's the the doc in the chat box. So. Okay. And actually, let's do two kind of like. Well, let's let's separate that into three columns because let's be very rigorous for saying okay, this is Texas and Virginia and. So why don't you? We can let's divide that so. 
uh, insert two columns, insert column right. Okay, so so this would be this one would be Virginia, and this one would be Belgium, and the first one is Texas. Yeah. Okay, so okay. we know that for Texas, I'm planning on flying, and if we talk about shipping that, I the calendar for that works as, and, and I'm going to just jump back to this calendar here, calendar works, um, I would say probably Friday the 17th, just to make sure in case there's delays. Uh, I would say that's the shipping final ship US. So yeah, let's move that from the 20th here. I'd say, how's that sound, guys? Like 17th, we're shipping uh, whoever signs up. Final ship. Now for uh, for US... That's the final ship US. If we were to ship anything to Belgium, I think probably 13th sounds like the absolute deadline, in which case people can't really sign up uh, if they don't sign up before 11th to Belgium. I mean, does that sound right? Because the uh, things yeah. that, I mean, the thing of concern. Is, so what I would definitely plan on shipping would be the extruder that's like the finished with all the there's bolts and parts and all that and the tapped heatsink. Uh, so it sounds like everyone's got to sign up by the 12th. So let's call this final international shipping. Uh, yeah, does that sound right? Yeah. Uh, let me share this doc with you. Well, that's, let me see. Uh, that's you guys can edit this too. So that's the calendar doc. Uh, final ship US. Martin, I got access denied to the calendar. You did? <clears throat> Are you guys seeing my screen still? Or um, no. Let me try that again. No. Can you guys see it now? No. No, I, I just see a gray background. share this uh, okay Jitsi it looks like Jitsi's got some issues here um, I mean I, I just checked my internet I'm 200 meg so uh, we might want to reconsider Jitsi because this is I mean I've, I've seen yesterday Jitsi cut out on me with voice for some reason uh, so I think we got to find a different solution here okay but anyway let's um, Let's go. Can you guys get... Yeah, you're in a dock. So final ship international is probably uh, 13th. Uh, when I checked UPS, they take 10 days. So that means it should arrive by... Um, uh, like the 22nd. So that's still kind of like pushing. There's a couple of days of buffer. Um, but yeah, I'm... I think we can do, I think 13th, like if we have to do something that's a little accelerated, I think that's still manageable. And I'll check at my post office. I was actually going to go there today. So I'm going to actually put that on my calendar here for the planning. I'm going to visit the post office today and see. I'll bring a package that will actually scan to the, to the Belgium address, to Michelle's home, and see what they tell me. So and I'll, then I'll judge that. Um, 
Yeah, for for the US, I think it's pretty reliable. Like, Chris, do you see any issues with the 17? Chris, can I hear you? Are you there? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah. Where's Chris? Chris, you there? Oh, he, his, his microphone is muted. Okay, can you guys hear me again? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, sometimes there are issues with Hangout. Sometimes there are issues with Jitsi. It's like unpredictable. Uh, I was yeah. told that Facebook actually had none of those problems. Katerina mentioned that. She, she. Uh, it's like I think it, um, we might want to try Facebook later. I don't know. Let's do that later. Um, but anyway, that was actually my fault there. Uh, cause, uh, <laughs> I'm off grid and I switched to grid power right now cause the sun went out. Okay. Um, uh, on account of Chris, Chris, can you hear me? Chris, you're muted. Or are you not hearing? Chris? He's muted. Let's move on. But, I mean, it sounds reasonable, so guys, pipe in if you don't think so. But with Final Ship US, I mean, that sounds good to me because it should be like three days. Uh, so probably um, to Texas. Uh, uh, does does USPS ship on Saturday? They, ship, they do ship on Saturday. So probably like the 22nd or 23rd should be the time but I, I can check that as well so maybe we have to push it we might have to check like whether it might be even here um, but I can check on that now um, just a question yeah. um, yep
in case there would be a few more later on. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. Can you? All right. Um, so, as I understand, you propose to move the date when people can sign up for the event a little bit earlier, for uh, especially for Belgium. Yeah. Um, would it make sense to order more packages than participants that have signed up and use them in case no more shows up for future events? Or do you think that the packages will change for coming iterations? It's doable. It's a thing that once we go through the... We can negotiate that a bit because, yeah, we can send like a couple extra kits or something. So, and I think they'll become more nice. transparent. I would minimize the package that you have to send uh, by um, yep. getting, like uh, like I said, the rods and uh, okay. uh, the, the wooden plate and stuff like that, uh, even the printed parts. Okay. And if you could send me a few ramps and I'm going to look into it, make a list. Uh, yeah, maybe one or two um, uh, extra. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so therefore we would um yeah 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 i think so and then we're easy on the ability to ship it without worrying that it's going to get there in time so in fact i might if we use that kind of a strategy i would probably push that over to the 10th even for you uh mm -hmm. because if you can source a lot locally then i can give you the critical parts which to me are electronics plus which are pretty lightweight uh, electronics plus the extruder, the critical extruder parts. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, the bolts and the rods. It's uh, it's um, they can be here very fast. And in two, three days, I have them. So uh, how do you and, and you very just, surprises? Okay, and you just got a bunch of the stepper motors, right? Uh, no, no, no. I didn't uh, order them yet. Um, okay. <laughs> I had a, a minor problem. My um, my cards, my credit cards, uh, ended the. Yeah. A liquidity issue for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it should it should arrive tomorrow. So uh, then I'm gonna order them. Normally, then they should arrive like this twenty uh, first or twenty second. Uh -huh. But as you know, AliExpress, uh, yeah, isn't that reliable uh, right. with shipping? What's <laughs> the, so let's talk about what's the cost difference if you're going to get them in Belgium. Because, I mean, uh, the stepper motors are actually the heavy part. They're actually quite, they're like, what are they? They're, they're, they're a bit heavy. Um, what's, what are your abilities to do that through things like Amazon? Like how much are they? Like twelve bucks each, or? Um, yeah, because that's like out of the everything in a printer, the the stepper motors are the heaviest single u unit part. Um, uh, well, I'm having a quick look. Okay. Uh, so maybe um, yeah, let's go to the keep going through this. Um, Let's let's keep going through the dock here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's like uh, 13 euros. 13? No, no, okay. no. Uh, dollars. Uh, dollars? It's a bit okay. less. Um, for the spec that we need, yeah? Hmm. No, they're, less, they're, they're a bit less uh, torque. Uh, okay. Um, that's going to be a thing. Uh, Okay, so let's let's actually go rigorously through this right now. So, okay, so the um, just item by item. So, the M6 by 18 that applies to a lot of bolts. What's the lead time in Belgium? 
for for uh, 18 millimeter bolts it's a few days it's very uh, it's like three days three days something like that okay same for and, McMaster. Uh, I'm McMaster. gonna order this week I'm uh, when I have my card like in the okay an issue okay not an uh, issue so bolts, it looks like bolts rods um, um bearings yeah okay let hold on there chris um what's your experience with mcmaster chris can't hear you can you hear us no chris is uh okay i, I i'm assuming that just like for us here i mean chris is probably gonna be like three days it's two days like literally like next day almost with mcmaster here okay that's good so i see green lights there uh you see green lights there for um item two there michelle is that good um the, the no not yeah uh that's that's all covered uh, okay. uh the linear I, bearings okay so three of the m3 by 25 that's covered right um, m3 yeah yeah that's covered okay and then like you know after this conversation go through this entire list i mean right now ideally uh, as we work through this can you put a link so that you actually it's like your check that oh yes this does can you do that or is that a physical place you go to uh, uh, to the products um, I'm looking at for the document right now yeah so as we go through this like you know after this meeting let's like check back in on this entire spreadsheet to make sure we have verified all those things um the eight millimeter rods is that something you actually buy it buy physically or that's shipping no it's online it's the same supplier as the as the um, yeah uh, the bearings yeah same here because that will be mcmaster for us what how about the one and a quarter inch screws is that the same supplier? Oh no, no, it's a it's a different, different one. I have two suppliers for the bolts because uh, the cheapest one doesn't has the eighteen millimeters, so I have to order them uh, at another supplier. They're a little bit more expensive, but still only half the price of McMaster. So oh wow, it's and pretty, pretty good. Okay, so if you can uh, put those links in, so um, yeah. That's also both of those are like three day orders. Yeah, something. Like yeah, um, I have to verify mine here because I, I mean, right now I just got those from the hardware store, but. Um, and Chris, how about you for the one and a quarter inch screws? It's probably well, we'll find out for both of us. Let's coordinate on that. Uh, OK, so the steppers. Yeah, I mean, I've got. Uh, they're they're about seven days for ship here uh, so that's yeah this one's kind of we gotta pay attention to this one make sure we gotta let's resolve that by um, let's come back to that one after we go through everything okay eight millimeter linear bearing which is the not metal the, but the plastic for us it's Amazon here it's like two days what's the time on your in Belgium for those for the bearings it's the same supplier of, uh, of the rods it's uh, a few days two three days uh, I suppose uh, is or, that yeah maybe no, it it can no no that supplier it can be up to five days. It's a German supplier, but uh, within a work week, okay. I have them. 
Um, so are you I, I will, I'm going to buy a supply of 100 uh, bearings, so okay, that won't be a problem. Uh, so rods, bearings. The, are you talking about the plastic ones? Yeah, the Igus, uh, it's, uh, the, the ones you use yep. are German-made and they're cheaper in, uh, if you order them in Germany. Okay, good. They're, they're less than, uh, than a euro. Okay. So, uh, pretty good. That's good. Uh, what about the belt? Uh, no, belts, um, I have to walk. But I think, I, yeah, it was... Uh, I don't know if they deliver in Belgium. Uh, I have to look it up. I was planning to order like quite a lot uh, at AliExpress also. Mm -hmm. Quite cheap and uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I've made a whole a whole and list. a pulley. Mm -hmm. uh, pulleys, I will. Yeah, it's all AliExpress. I made a whole list, like forty-one products that I wanted to order there. Uh, just waiting for my card. Now, but it's gonna be it's gonna be tight. So you're saying it's, I mean, it's still arriving on like the 21st. That's like, that's risk. We got to do something about yeah. that. Um, let's see. Which ones of the other ones are AliExpress? The belt that's Ali. Um, I'm looking into it right now. I'm going to put those as red. That, that, I don't think we can count on that. Or we're gonna have to do something else there. Probably not. Okay. Um, linear bearing that was okay. All those were other ones were okay. Okay. Um, okay. Hmm. That's yeah. Those are all Ali Express. Okay. Okay. What about the flanged bearing? Yeah, I was going to order the uh, Ali Express too, and. They're pretty hard to get. Uh, yeah. Well, Amazon, a lot of the products, uh, the links to Amazon. Yeah, so it looks like, I mean, I'm I have to ship for... Yeah, so probably like all these red ones, I just got to ship to you like um, <laughs> next week. The final ship international. I'll, I'll, I think I'll probably put all that in a, in a package. Okay. Um, the magnets. That's well easy. I have quite some magnets uh, left from uh, from the motor that can be used. Uh, they're 15 those? millimeters, but it doesn't matter. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that could be. Well, no, they they it does matter. They have to be 12. The ones that go into the carriage, they fit into the holes. So yeah. Okay, so we'll right. put that as red. Well, yeah. Twenty-two gauge wire. Twenty-two mm. gauge wire. Oh, for the yeah. That's, the... Uh, oh yeah, that was that was what we're using. For, yeah, that that's the stranded. It's cat. Cat five twenty two. Yeah, yeah. That's tricky. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll, they were on. Okay, I'll put that as a, unless you can show me a link that you have found. I mean, I'd like you to see if you can find links for that, um, because the framework here is we can ship that to you now. But for the future, <clears throat> you should be identifying local sources at the point when you're doing this, you know, as you beefed up your your micro factory, you're pretty much ordering yourself because you don't need our help to do it. Mm -hmm. So so try to fill these all in with local sourcing as time goes on. And and right now, see if you can uh, identify something. Uh, okay, end stops and wires. Um... Now, Michelle, there's um, can, 
Well, that, that's what I looked for for the moment uh, for the big big uh, order uh, uh, AliExpress. Uh, I said like I had f 41 products that I'm gonna yeah. uh, order and quite a large amount. So for uh, at least for printer five printers or something like that. Um, but most things I can find locally sourced, but yeah, a lot more expensive. But if it's only like for one or two, yeah. So maybe let's do see because both of those options may be relevant. Like for example, if somebody dis wants to sign up, and yeah. we can't do it. Like my shipment to you is going to be like two weeks. AliExpress is like two three weeks. Mm -hmm. so let's set up a new column here where you have the fast Amazon, okay? Right? Because you've yeah. got Amazon in your country, right? Which is like s overnight. Um, yeah, yeah, a few, maybe two, maximum three days. Okay, so let's do the Amazon route here. Belgium Amazon route. Is there any other? store outside of Amazon that does the very rapid shipping because in America that ca applies to McMaster because they're like here I get stuff like the second day um, it depends uh, like, yeah, for for certain products uh, you have very fast ones order before uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 p.m. and you have it next day uh -huh. it all depends for which product uh, okay it's not, so, not as big as Amazon. Then. Okay. So why don't you do a... Can you do this as a follow-up to this meeting? Uh, do your fast shipping route, because we might need that. All right? Okay. Um, so fill in everything, and then we can actually assess the cost. Like with that, we'd have to really... Uh, I mean, uh, we might need to use that, so let's assess the cost associated with that and it's probably one of those things where yeah we might have to use that because we just need more parts okay mm -hmm. let's do a column right which is the belgium amazon cost okay stepper motor wires that's uh all of that stuff same for you so I guess I guess the big big deal is yeah just fill in basically do the equivalent of the fast shipping for the Belgium in this column here, this one, yep. Uh, okay, uh, GFCI outlets. Um. Well, something comparable to the, the, those who uh, you use for the 110 volts. I also have on my list for uh, AliExpress. Uh, there isn't uh, the small form factor. Uh, mm -hmm. Find anything comparable and around here? But on Amazon, you can probably do that, right? Or not even? Yeah, Amazon. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm going to put that as a extra red because you might not even get it on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, but for the for the universal, maybe it isn't that necessary yeah. because uh, yeah, we, we could don't make... have to feed the, the the heated bed. Right. Exactly. So it's, yeah. Uh, however, and, and... we are uh, just FYI, we are running off that power supply for the for the power electronics experiment. So it kind of, if you don't have it, there's a shock shock risk for the power electronics experiments. So. Yeah. Um, we kind of do need it. The other point being that if you substitute, you have to make sure it fits, and that could be wasted time. Okay. Yeah, but uh, we have something uh, that yeah you can uh, plug into the wall socket with a uh, oh, yeah. GFCI. Okay. That can uh, offer protection for the experiments. Okay. But that, that doesn't build in into the. Um, uh, the panel itself something yeah like that. so actually yeah actually include that when you do the sourcing there like put a note in there yeah you know the insert note function where you do the insert note in the Google Doc 
put a note in there. No. It's under insert, tab insert and note, shift F2. Uh, you can do that. Uh, power supply. What's the situation of power supply for you? Um, wait, um, power supply. No, also the same that's in the already in in the bomb. Um, maybe I can local uh, source it locally, but I don't know. I have to look into it. Uh, yeah. That should be in the package you sent me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Plug. So that's that's your plug. Uh, yeah, that's a, that ain't the problem, eh? Uh, power cord and uh, and plug. Okay. So make sure you put that in, um, I guess, in the Belgium, Amazon, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's just call that Belgium fast or Amazon. Okay, plugs here, that's easy. Power cords are easy there. Um, okay, that here would be, yeah, I'll have to ship that to you. Well, uh, SD card, that's small, ship it to you. Yeah, what? Five volt power supply, probably that. Spring steel, okay. Um, that's McMaster for us, most likely. Couldn't find it with the local suppliers, uh, at least not in, in smaller amounts. Uh. Right, so that's probably this territory here. Um, I'll put the red here because you, yeah, that's questionable. Um, bed plate, okay. Um, what do we do for the six by six inch steel plate? Um, what? That I get actually locally from, um, this is like a metal, local metal store. Yeah, well, that's uh, the the local metal store opens uh, again the fifth of January, and, and I'm going there to get a angle bracket, uh, um, angle iron for uh, for the pros, so uh -huh. I can build some frames. Mm -hmm. And I'm, next, uh, I'm gonna get some metal plates for uh, printer beds. It's the, it's the same thickness that you use for the, the pros also, or not? Three millimeter. Yeah. yeah. Now... Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. I'm actually going to look at... Uh, with a spring steel... I'm going to experiment with it, but we might be able to get rid of that plate. Right now I use it and it's good, but I'm going to look at that, make sure that it's possible we can get away without it. Uh, so actually there's a, I'm going to put a note there. Without uh, the spring steel? With spring steel, without without the metal. Oh. Because now, now what I have is spring steel on top of the metal plate. Mm -hmm. Might be able to use thicker spring steel. Those are pretty relatively flat. They're pretty good. They're pretty impressive. Um, I'm gonna make a note there. Make sure. Uh, let's see. Can we get rid of it? 
if we need to but yeah uh, build tax surface uh, that's once again probably ship that uh, but yeah take a look at if you can find the same um, yeah you could get all those things except except this one here okay uh, double-sided tape now the build tack actually comes with it so that we can actually oh yeah right Chris uh, Chris you know about that Wait, did Chris uh, Chris completely dropped off, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. I yeah, the, the actually build tack it, it actually happens that that comes with the adhesive on the back, so I'm gonna cross that, strike through that right there. Okay. Um, split wire loom. Uh, that I probably need to. That's uh, that's another place. It's like a seven, four, three day. Yes. It's About. very expensive uh, here. It's eight, eight euros a meter. Mm. So okay. uh, I have it on my list for AliExpress. It's like one, one euro meter or something like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's a place in the USA that we get that. Yeah. So I'm gonna put that as a red thing on. On yours, we gotta ship it. Um, zip the ties. three millimeter. Yeah, the three millimeter plates I can buy, but uh, they're two by one meter, <laughs> like forty-eight kilos of steel. <laughs> Maybe Do you have a place that cuts metal to to size? Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, they have a good place yeah, in but, America. Uh, I can. They can cut it, but uh, maybe I can find smaller amounts. I have to look into it. Mm -hmm. And the zip ties, that's, I mean, we'll probably send. Well, t see if you can get that. Uh, zip ties tiny, won't be a problem. Yeah, I have, I have quite a lot, a lot laying around here uh, already, yeah. so. Heat shrink is probably heat shrink is probably easy on Amazon, right? That's, that's yeah, easy. heat shrink ain't Solder, the problem. I think, I think that uh, solder I have already. Yeah, that should be good. Ferrules. Yeah, I'll probably ship that because that's a tiny amount of them, and that's. Um, there's parts where they're like so tiny, and but they take accounting, so maybe I'll put that as a red since I don't know. Even maybe like this small stuff, like he. No, I'll put that as a, the other stuff. Yeah, I think you can get that. I don't need to ship that, but this one I'll put red. I think because. They're too easy to, they're super tiny, so they're not going to take, they're probably easier for me to ship than for you to buy. Um, now, okay, the 3D printed parts. So, what capacity do you currently have to produce parts? I'm sorry. Um, Look for uh, the most affordable mm. uh, <laughs> alternatives. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, they're not always uh, the most reliable, unfortunately. Michelle, I had a question. What capacity do you have right now for 3D printing? Uh, well, I only have one here next to me, but uh, I can use some more at a, at a local fab lab. 
How many do they uh, have at the local Fab Lab? Uh, it's quite uh, quite a bit. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. What did you say? You cut out. Say it again. Ah, uh, I can use two um, a, a lot of the time because uh, they're they're not used a lot over there. So um, yeah, five day five days a week probably I can uh, print overnight. Okay, uh, the wood base is probably something we get locally, right? And what you said, plywood. Uh, I have plywood. Uh, there is plywood here uh, available, so I can make uh, a few bases out of plywood. That, that ain't the problem. That's really uh... okay. Yeah. Uh yeah, that's that's local. Skate bearings. That's pretty uh, cheap everywhere. Uh, yeah, the uh, aluminium. I have the the bearings. That's Amazon or where? Yeah, or even uh, in in local. Um, uh, sports shop. Hmm. They have like cheap bearings for um, okay f uh, for uh, skateboards. So uh, like. okay. So now this, yeah, this stuff. This is what I'll be shipping to you. Uh, so I'll put it right there. That that I want to definitely ship. Spring. Okay, all this stuff. I'm gonna. For me, it's McMaster. For you, it's going to be ship. Mm -hmm. um, MK7 drive gears. Yeah, so these are the tricky parts. I'll uh, do that. Um, yeah, all this. Oh, yeah, the tiny screws. That's all. Yeah, these three. Uh, let's do that. these ones height sensor yeah that's probably ship that you didn't get any of those did you no not yet okay those are those so, are hard. Um, fine that's um AliExpress, but I have the, a bunch of those here. Um, Self-tapping screws for fan. I have them yet, but uh, I can. Yeah, they're gonna order them together with uh, with the bolts. It's a supplier of bolts. I'll ship and screws, those because so. they're tiny. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, now the fan. Uh, I think probably do the same because that's yeah. all the extruder parts. Yeah, with a bit of luck, all those parts will be here by the. Mm hmm. Then M6 nut, thermistor, heater. Okay, yeah, that's all shipping. Taxi, okay, and then, then the tools. Um, yeah, for those kind of tools like the five millimeter hex key, those are easy to get, yeah, right. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. It's no like, way. isn't that five millimeter that they use uh, in I IKEA also? I don't know. Is that five millimeter? Is it? 
I think so. Yeah, but that ain't the problem. Uh, the hex keys, uh, we don't need that much of them also. So, uh, a small Phillips screwdriver, okay. no and problem. Actually, uh, for those, we don't want to get like that. We just need the bit and then we probably want to 3D print the, the holders, right? So, it's a double. Yeah, so that's one like that. But what we should probably do is get a stub. Do you agree? Get a stub and do the little holder like we did? Yeah. Yeah. So each holder yeah. has two, two of the tools. So, yeah, you ins just insert all these. So, actually, um, if you spec it out for, like, do, do put links for your McMaster where you can get that locally. Like, find those with mm -hmm. the hex bit ends. So you can use them in a 3D printed little holder, and that'll be one of our initial prints. Yeah. Yep. So that's all that. Then crazy glue. That's easy on Amazon, right? Um, crazy glue. What? Is, uh, that's like uh, cyanoacrylate oh. glue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Look at the wait. What happened to the link there? Um. Yeah, this kind of stuff is super glue. Yeah. Well, not not that. It's, it's, not, it's not gorilla. Let me see the other. Yeah, this this type Ooh, of stuff. This. More like this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, make sure you get the same type of glue. Um, black, okay, the contact paper now. Do you have access to that? Because I, I can throw that probably in a package. It'll be pretty... But that's actually a big sheet. Well, actually, it's a small sheet unless there's uh, people signing up for the the big pr big one. Uh, I probably should get that too because... Or yeah. can you get that easily? Yeah, maybe not. I won't. I'll. I'll put the red there, so you don't have to do. It. Um, as far as those hex keys, all those keys. See, it's like you have to basically pay attention how much, like, because there's all these parts. It's probably it might even be easier for me to ship those. But that's the, okay. So that's. I think we're pretty much covered. So, so the. I guess the ones that. Yeah, that one is kind of troubling. That might be like the biggest block in terms of costs. Um, so the belt probably will do that. Pulley probably send that to you. Flange bearing probably send it to you. Magnets probably send to you. This probably too. End stops. Stepper motors. Yeah, I probably send all of that. Um, this one. Plug. Now that's going to be you. That one I wanted to send SD card and 5 volt power. Yeah, it's probably all sent to you. Okay, so a lot of that to be sent. Um, so basically, like the big things that we don't need to send is the board, the rods, the hardware. Uh, but yeah, all the electronics, extruder. So what I'll do then. Mm -hmm is when we look at the calendar here yeah I'll just throw all that into the box on the 10th if anybody signs up like after yeah I'll send let's see what's what's practical to send a month bunch more of like the 
Yeah, probably a few of these extra. Yeah, I'll just put in a few extra. Um, and then you can use them for another time. And... Yeah. And then we'll account for that, like for whatever is spent after after the workshop. It all depends on how many people sign up for what the accounting is on that. All right. But to put in a few extra ones, I mean, you'll definitely use them later on. Because I don't think we're going to be moving away from, like, the system we have right now. I think it's relatively stable. Uh, I think the extruder is relatively stable. So it won't be like we're buying a bunch of stuff that's not used. Um, there's questionable parts like the build tack. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I think for an unheated bed, the build tack works. I mean, it just works great. I mean, you can really do production printing on it. So, I don't see any parts uh, here that would come disused, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I'll send a few extra. Uh, yep. There was some build surface that I, uh, that's on my list for AliExpress also, but I don't know if it's uh, as good as build tech. Yeah, maybe stay away from it, maybe, like, unless, just get a sample, if anything, but yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Uh-huh, yep. Because the, the the reviews were mixed on that, it's gonna be imitation stuff, and mm -hmm. maybe they didn't get the formula right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it, it looks more or less. It looks like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So okay. So that's pretty good. I think we're pretty good on that. So the bottom lines being that we got to make a big shipment, like on the tenth, and then the seventeenth for the U.S. So I guess the biggest concern is that the tenth sending you a few extras. So we'll be we'll be pretty decent on that. And in case somebody tries to sign up for yours, like after that, like we hear of somebody and uh, let's see, is it practical to do an expensive shipment? Let's see, because on Amazon the things you can get are everything but then it, when it comes to like building out the extruder from scratch unless you have practiced that a couple of times it just take takes too long to just do a custom single one um mm -hmm. so maybe just about every what i'm seeing here is that if somebody wanted to sign up the only way they could sign up is if we like express ship them if i would express ship you at expensive shipping cost like you know like say three day four day express shipping but i guess that would be a good thing to find out when i go to the post office maybe uh see how much it costs to ship just the extruder because because in an emer like if we really did want to sign somebody up late you can go through amazon for just about everything outside of the spring steel. I mean, that's the only part I'm seeing missing. Spring steel and the extruder. Because mm -hmm. you can get all those full kits of the electronics that I think would work. Um, yeah, I'm going to go through the list uh, yeah. this evening and tomorrow and uh, try to fill it in. Yeah. So I have it in. suppliers. Uh, yeah. And then... Yeah, I'm really seeing like the, even the spring steel plate for the 6x6 six six inch, I got that on Amazon, so see if you can find that. Because um, it looks like right now that if I were to, to ship the Extruder Express, then people still can sign up if you get the fast Amazon shipping, which, um, yeah. So let's, let's evaluate that option. But otherwise, I'll plan on s shipping you a couple extra in uh, tenth. Okay. So does that yeah does that address the shipping issues right now then? Yeah. Pretty much. Yes. Um, and then for so let's move on to the yeah let's wrap that up. Um, next well, time. Uh, is just to, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, like for the uh, for the spring st uh, steel. Yep. Piece uh, to ship to Belgium, so there's yeah there's it adds quite a lot to the cost. Uh, if I order from from the same um, uh, from the same link, 
I have to look into it if there is like more uh, local distribution of those products through Amazon. Uh, you said specifically. Well, how much would extra would it be to order just one extra when you order the whole lot? Uh, it's for the whole lot. Yeah, just I mean, just to get one extra, you know, just in case you know somebody breaks theirs or somebody else shows up early. I know. I know. What if five people show up? At least one. Yeah. Uh, well, I will make a list of the products that are hard for me to to get locally, and then maybe you can ship a, a few more, and then other. Yeah, that's a, that I can purchase much more easily locally. Uh, I can get them in a few days, then maybe. Uh, okay. Without without the extra cost, like sixty dollars, and then. With the, the extra import fees and with the shipping, it will be like an extra forty dollars on top of that mm -hmm. if I order uh, the the spring steel myself here. So, right. Yeah. Now yeah, it I might be that you just it. find it on Amazon. So take a look at that. I'm gonna check in with you then on Monday to make sure we've got what we have for hard to source parts. Then. Yeah. 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 So that's a red no item. That's a an important item there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now let's talk about our practice session. When should we have that? Um, so, huh? The earliest on that sounds like. Michelle, what have you done? Um, you didn't touch the extruder part, did you yet? No, I, l I have looked into it a bit, but uh, right. I haven't built it yet. Uh, I, I printed the parts and, and uh, got some bearings, but I didn't get farther further than that. Right. Now. Um, It's not a risk point as far as, I mean, you've seen it built here, right? So, like, if we ship you the parts, you'd know how to do it. Is it acceptable yeah, that yeah, we yeah. practice? Mm. No, I mean. Okay, so in a practice run, what are the what's the scope of what we want to achieve there? Um, we can do a lot of, you know, we can probably do a, a practice run on all the the theoretical material and all the other content like maybe I would say like the 15th uh, what do you say to that practice run because mm -hmm. but you won't have the extruder like that's unless I ship on Express um, practice run uh, for what which parts then well going through all the con let's see well, actually, for going through all the content, we should probably practice like next week, mm -hmm. like content practice. So, and then, and then look, really, we can go over like just all the written material and all the workflow. Um, you want to do that like Wednesday in our next meeting then? Uh, Wednesday, which day is that? Uh, Wednesday. Um, eight. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that will work. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking uh, that I have uh, an appointment, but it's during the day somewhere. Uh, so, yeah, okay. We can go through all the content as far as the written stuff. It's since I'm not sure how much we want to go through. We can start that. Like I want to just seed that right now, and maybe. Uh, so for content practice, there's a bunch of documentation we need to fill in. I want to ask for your help, uh, Chris and and you, regarding instructionals for the universal build. 
you got the Arduino <coughs> build. Tom, you can continue filling in the power electronics build. I can do what's most useful for me. Um, should, should I look into uh, the, making the plotter build? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the WebGL and several parts. Yeah. Should I focus on that? Well, view models? I would say that the number one thing is just the written Google Docs. If those are in good shape so that all the things we're going to say are actually written on paper, that's a pr bigger priority. Yeah. Would you agree? Like, literally, you can give this these documents to somebody else, and if they're reading it, they would cover like 80% of the content. Mm -hmm. We got to get it to that level right now, so we're not... So we can basically onboard other people really easy. They really don't have to do any curriculum after this, really, you know? Yeah. So what I would suggest, let's focus on that. If you have time on top of that, mm -hmm. or if, you know, you just got spare time, yeah, the WebGL would, would be cool because, I mean, also it's a nice asset to have all together. Yeah, it's awesome. Good graphical support. And yeah. Um, but with the CAD in FreeCAD, which is actually pretty complete, we're pretty good um so let's maybe like the last thing we want to cover today is um let's let's go into the document with the four days plus the day nine five through nine so go back to um andreas did you fill in the day zero document yes you did thank you uh would you mind actually yes yeah, so can you, would you mind putting an edit link right below that? Because uh, yeah, believe sure. it or not, they they took out that feature where you click on it and it goes to edit. So I, so somebody actually can't access that document without knowing the link. Um, cool. So we've got that. Hey, hey Martin. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, one, one quick question about the yeah. prototyping. We're talking about yep. doing the power electronics part yep. like in a week or so. Yep. How many like soldering irons? I, I'm going to need a, a, a example circuit board to use. You know, you were going to do a three D printed circuit board. Yep. Let's cover that. And, let's let's go into this. Yes. Uh, soldering irons are actually in a kit, I believe. So let let's actually uh, in a day zero. Let's look at. Uh, let's type that in. So there's a kit, and I believe I put the <clears throat> the soldering iron is in a kit. Let's see. Um, just stuff we ship because I mean that's we got to have soldering irons for everybody um, Andreas I still don't see the link for the dock can you put it in because I need to access it day zero um, you know assuming that uh, for, for Belgium they're gonna have to have two 40 volt soldering irons oh isn't that so that's right mm -hmm. we didn't cover the shipping of the of the actual kit part so let's actually briefly go through that because I gotta ship that out to you all too all those parts are actually here uh, a lot well, of I, I do have other. two soldering irons uh, right here and okay. probably uh, okay oh yep Sorry, okay. get out there. Sorry, sorry, that's all I was doing. <laughs> so, so is, is each of the participants going to take a soldering iron home with them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that. we, that's that's the plan. But I mean, it's I mean, it's important for the yeah. We should have people take that home because if they want to continue prototyping, they can. That's one of the ideas is here is that people are fully capable to do. OSC style prototyping like after they leave this place right so yeah we do want to just include they're not expensive you can get a cheap one for like five bucks or something so um, let me see so let me put a link to the the actual uh, dev kit uh, BOM it's already in a link at the bottom but let me put it at the, at the day zero so that, that also brings up another question. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about customizing the kit for yeah. two, two, four iron, what about 
say the light dimmer. Uh, yeah, do you yeah. want to dim a 240 volt light or a 110 volt light? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we got to work with 240 there, so we got to have the custom version for Belgium. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're gonna have to have that that part, unless we can do one that's for both. Like, can we get a 240 watt, 240 volt bulb in America, or does a does a 120 volt bulb yeah. work in Belgium? Yes, if we. <laughs> yes, if we're careful, if we got the you, duty cycle right. You 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 could, but you'd have to limit it to half. You know, fifty percent duty cycle. Yeah, and then again. Yeah. Like you probably want to show an experiment. We probably want to show what it looks like at full power. So what would work probably for us if we get a 240 volt bulb for America, and then it's it's just less bright in America, right? Tom could do that, but uh, yeah. I was thinking about uh, getting the the sockets and and, and the, the light bulbs uh, here. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're getting that, that be, then that we should get the problem. same ones in America. Mm. So take a look at the link that's at day zero. Links to parts for kit. Can you see it? Mm. Refresh and look at day zero on the Gen January twenty twenty Steam Camp page. Uh, Steam Camp page. Okay. Oh, uh, let me paste it in again. So let's let me paste in the day zero. Uh, oh no, it's, uh, it's okay. Mhm. Mm Okay, so Chris had to go because folks showed up early. Okay, um, right. So if you look at day zero, look at the BOM. What's included right now? And I might add a couple of other things here, but let's see what do we got for the the light bulb. We got the light bulb in there. No. Uh, No, it's not in there. Let me. There's another spreadsheet on the same page there. That's the working spreadsheet you got to go to. Um, so I try to break it down. Project days tablet, day one printer, day two mill plotter, day three electronics. Yeah. So the soldering iron there is four bucks. Strip board, not perf board, copper clad boards, copper chloride etchant wires. Uh, okay, I didn't. I didn't put the light bulb in there. That has to go in there. A light bulb and socket should go into there. So let's add to the working spreadsheet. I mean, we can um, collate them together. Tom, you see the working spreadsheet and then the final spreadsheet. Tom. There's going to be a light bulb. Uh, Tom, are you still there? Michelle, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Tom, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, now. Okay, uh, I don't know why I'm cutting out here. Now, uh, Tom, 
you see the the working spreadsheet and the final s spreadsheet for the on the day zero page. Do you see it? It's a link to a wiki page, right? Tell exactly me exactly what you're talking about. about. Okay, so... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Right. Now, all I see is the international D3D universal BOM. Okay, are you on a January 2020 Steam campaign on the wiki? Yes. Click on day zero. And day index. zero, I'm there. Okay, so link to parts for kid, January 2020 Steam Camps Kid BOM. If you click on that, oh. there's two, two spreadsheets in there. And um, the second one is the working okay. spreadsheet. Okay, working spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, I just added the light bulb and the light bulb socket, but yeah, we, we need to add like a few screws and wires and details into that. Um, so now you know where the final spreadsheets are. So uh, let's go to the actual day one and d through day four, because what we want to do right now is all of us. So I broke this down into in a working document. We should put some organizational notes there. But from day day one to day four, that's the co actual content, right? And then day five through nine, there's more content. There's uh, there's an editable doc there at the bottom, the edit links. Uh, so there's an edit link okay. under every single day. There's on the first day. There's going to be a presentation. Now. How do we do the presentation? Because that's going to happen first thing in the morning in America, but that's going to be way late in a day in Belgium. So, Michelle, what are your thoughts on that? Do you want to just present? You can start. You know you have four minutes down, but what about the rest? Um, what, do you, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, well, uh, Probably we're going to have to plan our day a bit different here in Belgium. Eh? Um, uh, well, uh, the, the does it have to be a live presentation or can you pre-record it? We have plenty of pre-recorded ones from before. But, what? I, yeah, I mean, I can pre-record it, yeah. Um, so basically, like the intro presentation I could do and then... Then when we do one in America, I could just hit play. <laughs> no, um, it's probably that makes most sense unless, unless Michelle, you want to just take it on yourself because the it what it would require if you did that yourself would be I would, I would just start with a TED talk, and then I have a presentation that I'm gonna refine for I'm gonna like adjust it to the Steam Camps, but it's basically you know like 50 or 100 slides and you can go through that if you like. Uh, if you're ambitious, or you can, I mean, you, subject-wise, you, I mean, you, you're pretty, you know, you, you're well-oriented on the OSC work. Uh, so the two options there are either do that presentation yourself or just do my recording. What, what do you want to do? Um, well, I thought it, it was going to be nice to have like uh, the international co uh, collaboration and then uh, uh, if you do the, the presentation that uh, the few uh, the separate locations can can watch it yeah live and so it's it's um, yeah it has more the international uh, character uh, but the it depends how we plan our day yeah we well, I think you should follow the curriculum as as in a schedule on day one. Take a look at that, because I mean, mm -hmm. once it's because once we do like there's going to be too much customization otherwise for every single location. Like say there's an event in Japan, like everyone's going to do. I don't know. I think just just follow the program. It makes it easier. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, then maybe um, a combination of a uh, certain pre-recorded parts and uh, part partly me uh, doing a, pre a part of the presentation. Um, I have to think about it. 
what yeah. the best formula will, yeah. will be. And, uh, no, it does definitely make sense actually to do both. Like I can do uh, a lot of it, do the whole presentation and, and kind of like get the inspiration out there for why we're doing the steam camp and the big picture of it because there's a lot to it and mm -hmm. then you can you know you can take it from there here's here's now we get busy and you know you can yeah. add things yeah, to we it can discuss, uh... There are questions uh, yeah. about it. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that makes more sense. So, so I'll do the presentation that will be the what we can recycle and uh, do that for this, this event. And uh, yeah, yeah. And then mix up both of those. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hold on, I'm just... Uh, so, Andreas, you embedded... Uh, I'm just redoing it, but you embedded the original doc. I did? <laughs> yeah. That was... Hold, I got it. I, I just... Uh, I'll put a small one in there. Okay, if you guys want to go into the, I think, the editable version of the day zero. I'll, I'm just going to put a note there. Uh, I'll share that. Okay, I'm just opening up the sharing settings for the day zero document so everyone has access to it. And the general practice is when, when we're working publicly, open on the internet, anyone can edit. Okay, so I did that for day zero. Um, let's, go, let's go to the day one document. So if you look at the day one, so we just agreed that um, we'll do a, a pre-recorded one for Europe. Uh, so it'll be like 30 minutes, I was thinking. And then I was thinking like in the next 30 minutes, just go... I mean, a big part is what people want to get out of it. So I was saying 30 minutes OSE introduction and then 30 minutes people's introductions. And then, um, if you guys see that, what, what do you guys think? 30-minute uh, discussion of outcomes, like discuss what we're here for and how it works kind of deal. Uh, so starting to... I think what's proper there is actually an overview of collaboration, like overview of the collaborative literacy. Um, so what you see, what we need to do is, so that's the day one curriculum outline. That needs to be substantiated with a bunch of pages in a document. Right? So I can work on uh, a lot of the introduction part. Uh, maybe this collaborative literacy section here. What do you guys think? 30, 30, 30 minutes like that. Does that sound right or, or what? I mean, will there be some opportunity for the people amongst the international teams to meet virtually? So even if you don't have a um, uh, something in the morning an event, will you have, maybe there's possibility to have something in the evening just it can be something silly, just ah, okay. everyone seeing each other, waiting, okay. um, seeing that, okay, now America is, is online and then everyone gets to see everyone. Um, and then maybe combining that with, I don't know if the intention is to have some kind of uh, virtual groups as well, so that people can chat with each other uh, uh -huh. online uh, in yeah. and see what other people. Yep. So yeah, you're right. So so let's have the USA team show up for their intros and we can check in. We could do that for like, now that's going to be in the middle of our printer build. So we probably want to jump out for like 10 minutes and, and say hi. Um, and we find out what all the other people, who all the other people are in Europe, something like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
at the intros of the Europe team. Um, now, so like right now we're talking about Jitsi. Like, what's happening right now with Jitsi is completely unacceptable. Like, we can't have this. So, um, what I would suggest actually is, can we try like Facebook for the next meeting? We can try. Um, I've also just so you know, like now during our call, I've sent an inquiry to um, Cisco just to ask what the prices would be for an NGO of doing uh, WebEx, both WebEx calls and WebEx events. Um, so far, they sent a, a link so for a 30-day trial, but we can't use that for the event. But, um, just as a second backup for, for okay. the future. Hmm. Cases, but we, sure, I'm fine with trying Facebook uh, next time. Yeah. Um, okay. Hopefully, Chris is okay with that. Is he... We need to find out with Chris because he's uh, he doesn't use. Otherwise, sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, uh, what is your view otherwise of you using WebEx or some paid system? Yeah, we want to find out some. We need to have it work. So whichever works. All right. I mean, okay. Yeah. We cannot <laughs> interrupt communication because the software doesn't work. So, um, yeah. 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 Um, That's good. I'll continue to check prices. Let's let's see what happens with Facebook, and then let's reevaluate after that. Because Katarina told me that she's never had the kind of issues that you have on Google Hangouts, Skype, or Jitsi. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, like in this 30 minutes here, what I'm thinking is get people, uh, people's mindset around collaborative literacy because the main outcome I'd like to see is that people understand the principles of large-scale collaboration, both technically and psychologically. Uh, it's a different way to think about it and behave. And also there's tools that enable it to do so. But if we were to give people those kinds of skills, I think people's um, mindsets can shift quite a bit. So I think we should discuss that a little bit right there and then just get right into our doing our stuff. So um, I, I was going to propose like one hour of kit unpacking and explanation so we can go through an overview of what all is included in the uh, in, uh, whole build out over the nine days. Now, that only leaves the question of the people who are showing up for the weekend, but I also think just to see all the parts and how they're used and because we can basically walk through like, I mean, the parts we, we've got in a kit are like super general and multi-purpose things. They're very generative. So just to explain what they all are and how they work, I think is a useful, I mean, what do you guys think? Any comments? And if it's if it's useful, oh, say, I'm sorry. Say it again. Say it again. I I dropped out here. What was your question? If it uh, if it's useful to do the one hour unpacking and explanation or uh, yes yes. Yeah yeah of course yeah I think uh, if they if they start the builds uh, well prepared it uh, yeah. The, it isn't a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that'll be good because the span of technologies that are included in there is quite wide. So that survey, I think, would be useful. Okay. Even, I mean, even for the people that are coming there just for the 3D printer build, because a lot of those parts are related to the 3D printer itself. So it's like, mm -hmm. it will be quite relevant to everybody. Okay. Um, and then four hours printer build. So if we have all the parts for the kit, I mean, it should really take, like the extruder is the most complex, but if we have the, the part kit, the extruder is like one hour uh, to assemble. I, I, I don't know. I think we can do it. What do you think, Michelle? You think we can do it in like four hours from a prepared kit, prepared uh, and tested kit? Well, I think it's going to be pretty tight, uh, four hours, but... An axis, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, an axis for a slow person is like an hour each. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's super tight. Uh, so three hours for axes. Yeah, well, actually, you're right. Um, one hour for control panel. And you're, you're counting on, on uh, eight hour days. Yeah. Or uh, can it be, be a bit more? Well, the, the initial idea was eight hour days, but we can we can stretch it if you want. So f I guess four hours. Yeah, I mean, if there's a. The, the Raspberry Pi uh, tablets introduction. Could we do like a shorter introduction? Yeah, so that was the idea there was, yeah, this does not add up to four five. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can save that for after hours, but see already that's cutting it late. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, here we're like, I think probably we got to do six there and then save that for after hours. And yeah, in a half an hour we do, can do quite an explanation and then do it hands on with starting to build uh, the first uh, axes. Uh, maybe combine it a bit like uh, doing uh, uh, the Z axis and, uh, and explaining the whole concept of the universal axis in the meanwhile. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that, that, uh, the explanation, that's something that could also be pre-recorded. See that's 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 the deal. Like, if we if we basically give people, like for example, if you guys go to the actual build manual, which mm -hmm. is the third link on on the day one program, look at the manual. I already started that, and we have videos that show how to build the axes. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go go there, there's videos already. Uh, so yeah, that is that can be pre-recorded. Um, if yeah, the reason I say that is you can control the time better that way. Yeah, we mm. definitely want people to go take a look at all the videos, and then if they're familiar with the videos, they're in a doc. There, I embedded them all in a in a D3D Universal build manual. Mm. If you guys can see. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I think one hour per axis is really long. I think it takes like. No, it, it might be realistic, like one hour. One hour, I well, think, is realistic. If we uh, use a uh, um, uh, battery, uh, uh, how we call it, a power drill? Uh, no, hand drill, like uh, for for uh, tightening of the of the bolts, uh, and it can go pretty fast. Uh. How long? How long do you think it would take? Take the average client to build one axis. If all the pieces are laid out, uh, yeah, between a half an hour and an hour. If, if it's a handy person, he can do it in a half an hour. Mm -hmm. sure. Hey, Martin, do you have anything like a like a checkpoint that, that you can, uh, or a synchronization point where you can say, okay, everybody at this point, you ought to have one access completed. And, and, and somehow do that so you can focus a little slow and help them out more quickly. Uh, yeah. That what, what I'm thinking is to try and do everything you can to keep everybody up to date. Well, what we should do is um, on a day one curriculum. So, so, so uh, time check and time checks. So that's page two. Just started it, but we should have the schedule. So, like a detailed schedule. So we coordinate everyone. That would be really nice because what we find when things go out of control is when uh, we don't follow the idea of swarming. Swarming is when the first person done helps the person that's not done. So that's how you can you can do this. Um, so basically, the first person done helps the helps the next unfinished person and then as soon as that's done they help the next unfinished person until everybody and people do not proceed 
until everyone's at the same point. That we found works the best and we need to stick to that. So swarming, uh, does that make sense, Tom? Oh, uh, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Um, uh, did you guys hear the part about swarming? That first person no. done helps the next person that's not done? No. No. Okay. So the workflow that, Tom, according to your checklist thing, so I'm putting page two yeah. on the day one curriculum. Detail, detailed schedule is there so we coordinate time. So like hour one of build. Right? Like first hour we do this and so forth. Time checks okay. for build. Good. So the swarming idea is uh, the very, very first person, that's, that person that's done in half an hour, they help the, the next person that's not done. Oh, yeah. And we do that yeah, and we stick good. to that religiously. And you're going to find a lot of resistance to that and you're going to have to tell people, hey, help. Like the first person is going to be done, like unless you emphasize, uh, people are just going to like, I mean, I, my experience is like you, you really got to keep on top of that. So as we as the coordinators we have to observe where everyone is and, and the first person to make sure that they start helping the next person mm -hmm. um and as as if we follow that we get the best results N none of this thing like i don't need help like i go away in the corner those were always the people that for whatever reasons whether it's someone who might either be insecure or they think they're they're too hot to get help we have to break through that psychology and, and say like we're actually all working together. So there might be people that are like embarrassed and they are not they like might refuse help for that reason. And other people, they think they don't need help because they're too good. Uh, if that happens, we need to address that uh, because those are the cases where those people end up like getting lost. And I've seen that over and over again. Uh, so part of the psychological preparation is that you have to be willing to work together and that's part of the collaborative literacy that we teach. Uh, but we really need to stick to that and that way we're all at the same point on a schedule. So basically everyone remains on a... So we can go ahead too, too far. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, okay. And that makes it easy because you don't have to explain the same thing ten times to each person. It's practical mm -hmm. for many reasons. Um, it's easier on the instructor. So we really need to stick to that. And in this document, we need to basically detail all that out. Hour one, five minutes. You know, break it down into like every fifteen minutes, even mm -hmm. literally. Um, and that way break it down by hour and even 15 minute sections because we're coordinating we're kind of like coordinating a very tight quality experience and yeah we have to have that documented and all that and you can just simply check in and you can check in on your schedule where are you supposed to be at that 15 minute mark uh, so you can adjust accordingly because if you don't know if you don't have that laid out in front of you you don't know where you are and then definitely every hour um, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm afraid that normally this place closes down uh, at 10 o'clock, so uh, I'm going to have to cut it short, uh, I'm afraid. Right uh, now? Yeah. You're saying right now? Okay. Yeah, or, or uh, yeah, I can pick up the thread again when I'm yeah, home. Yeah. Uh, it's only five minutes, so... Uh, okay, okay. Um, 
yeah maybe um the yeah okay okay so i'll i'll put this up online as soon as i'm done you can uh, if we're still on you can join us but yeah go ahead but anyway um so day two so there's day one we got to fill that all in day two we got to fill it all in um i'll do a lot of that because that's the plotter and uh, and a cnc hole drill device added onto the d3d universal uh documentation of that and every everything else um now day three that's the shift to electronics so that's largely uh well that's some of that is is you michelle yeah, and then day yeah, four well. is largely tom but basically go into each each of those documents and start writing out the exact thing from schedule to mm -hmm. content right and then like for example yeah. link to supporting docs like your tommy or Ardu arduino support doc or whatever other so use the full mm -hmm. power of the internet and then day five through nine uh, it's a little more loose because uh, we got some principles to follow there but that's like the fully experimental thing where we're just getting together and, and putting our brains around the problem so it doesn't require a lot of preparation outside of us knowing the mm -hmm. the collaborative techniques um, and the part set being available. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I was going to ask uh, the the battery pack. Yeah. Um, there's um, uh, somebody who joined recently. Yeah, Luke just designed a battery pack. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I looked at the, at the video partly and, uh, and at, uh, at his designs, uh, it's great work, huh? It is. So you're talking about Luke, he is a super performer, yeah. Um, he's the guy, yeah, he's a very skilled guy and he's great fine. He's totally into, he really wants to do the camps and he's hoping to appear at the Texas one if he can. But yeah, he is um, an extremely skilled person. So look at the last video on the OSC YouTube channel, my my channel, uh, mm -hmm. and you'll be pretty uh, floored. But we're uh, talking it's an about interview with him. Or? Yeah, yeah, and we're ah, he, okay. he also understands the axial flux motor. He actually knows what he's talking about. Ooh, and he also okay. understands. Yeah, he yeah, also understands advanced vehicle design. For super lightweight oh. vehicles so we're already scheming about the 3d printed fiber reinforced uh 100 kilogram car that runs on <laughs> yeah 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 uh, crazy stuff so it's great, look at it's that. Great. um yeah, well, it's a uh, subject matter that uh, interests me a lot it's a huge market here uh, electric oh, yeah. vehicles and, and, <laughs> and the good thing is he actually knows what he's talking about there he knows the parts and he knows chargers and he knows um electric motor design and uh yeah wow it's really good and he, does and he, he have free get files for the the battery holder uh he's got open oh, pi open scad files he doesn't use free cad because he, <laughs> he, he's uh he does everything in low lower level software but um <laughs> and he designs microprocessors for a living so uh, <laughs> And Great. he said that he can't. <laughs> he said he, KiCad sucks because you can't design an advanced memory chip with it. <laughs> but for lower tech <laughs> stuff like ours, it's perfectly fine. Uh, but anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. This yeah, so this guy's out of control. Good. <laughs> and um, major addition to the team. So, yeah. Um, Great. Regarding, um, yeah, so the curriculum, anyway, we got to uh, beef all that up. There's recent contributions on a battery pack with uh, advanced chargers for that. So we, we just got to basically all write it down, put it into those documents. And maybe, Tom, um, we can discuss a little bit on a, on the day four curriculum. If you want to go into the edit on that day four there. Do you see it? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, just go in yep. there. Uh, yeah, the thing, like, maybe let's let's just go over this and then quit because it's, it's a really long meeting here. Uh, let's discuss the power panel a little bit because you said, okay, what do we do there? So, uh, day four curriculum. So, part of it is the power panel. So, what I'm thinking is um, it's basically like an oversized strip board, kind of, in concept, but it's 3D printed. So, let me do another slide. Um, <coughs> so power panel design and but Tom fill me in on where you're at on all the the welder design and all that well, well the, the light, light 
uh, dimmer part of it. <clears throat> I got that going the other day, and I used a 120 volt uh, source with a 120 volt light and a bridge rectifier to get it to rectify, you know, the AC to DC, and then I got the light dimmer working fine with the IGBT. IGBT started getting a little hot. Yeah, Arduino, Arduino control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Well, then, then uh, now I've I've uh, already done the design on the uh, welder. I mean, it's just a simple modification, but to go with with battery packs and to just go to the welder output. Okay. So, uh, so now the only thing left is to put put that together and start testing it. Okay. Uh, where's the welder design? Uh, can you put a link on page three? Well, he, I had it in my uh, document, in my instructional. Okay, um, that's in the Arduino tutorial, or is that another one? Is it uh, the same IGBT uh, that you use for the, the lights and the welding? It's got to be. Yeah. Is it, Tom? Right. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Oh, wow. See, we're doing great. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, and the power panel part list, uh, I've put uh, a little spreadsheet with suppliers for the, uh, the different parts, like M Mauser and uh, Newark and DigiKey and stuff. But I'm not sure about uh, all the parts. Maybe if you have the time, and uh, can you look into it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If if it's if it's correct, because yeah, I'm not. Uh, that at home, and you, yeah, yeah, you are you talking about the power? Or what? Yeah, uh, the parts for the the power panel. It was like mostly Amazon and things like that, and I've put in uh, links to uh, the, um, the relevant parts, but different suppliers, like uh, DigiKey, oh. and Mauser, T, uh, TME, and even AliExpress, but. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about certain parts, but I uh, will make a summary and uh, and send it to you. Uh, the things I'm okay, yeah, sure about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I get that's access good. denied yeah. uh, on that link. Yeah, and please, uh, like, as we're doing, the, like, try to start using these actual day one through four documents so we put everything in there. Yeah. And then we can clean them up. Okay. But use those as working docs for curriculum prep. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Andy, w okay. which uh, link was denied? Uh, the one, the recent one um, that you just posted. Oh. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Um. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Me too. Okay. Advanced. Uh, change public on the web can edit. What? Which? Uh, so this is the day four. Is that the one? Tom's yeah. document. I don't know which one. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's the day uh, four. Oh wait, Tom. Yeah, is that? You know, have I got that locked or what? Yeah, at least for me. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the elements. So uh, it's not sure through link. Yeah, go to advanced settings and share on the internet. Edit. Uh, I have to go. Uh, maybe see you uh, okay. in ten minutes or something, uh, and else uh, see you one of these days. See you Wednesday. Wednesday is our yeah. next. We're, yeah, we're checking sure. in. Let's check in on where the the, the curriculum doc is at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, Michael. Nice, nice meeting you. you. Yeah, nice meeting you too, uh, um, Andrew. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. Andreas. Andreas. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see you guys later. Ciao. See you. Ciao. So you said uh, go to sharing, advanced, the private, so I change it from private to public on the web? Yeah, go to sharing, advanced, public on the web, and then yes. there you still have to change one more tab, which is can, you have choices, can comment, view, or edit, select edit. Public on the web, oh, can view, can, can edit. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. It works now. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank <coughs> you. So there you've got. Oh, okay. Great. You got the light dimmer. Um. 
And you said you got the welder in there? I thought I did. Uh, that you... page looks empty to me, is that? Yeah, I'm looking at it. I don't see anything in there. Uh, all right, all right. Yeah, I'll... I'll uh, okay. Oh, crud. I have that on my computer at home, and I'm at the farm right now. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so we can no, I'll, 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 talk too much about that. Good. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's discuss the power panel then. Let's switch right to that. Um, okay. So on day four. So while there, okay, there's your, we can just put, all right, well, uh, power panel design. So basically, so you got a 3D printed board and it's like we got to set, okay, what are those dimensions? We got to print it so it's printable on a six inch printer so we can do like a six by 12 or 6 by 18 panel would be easiest. So we, we do a 4D printed thing, which has got two bends in it. See what I'm saying? So we do like, I would do like a 15 inch long panel. Um, 15 inch long panel by 15 by 6 inch 3D printed panel. And how do we get that on a 6 by 6 inch printer? For the printing, so it would be a corrugation, and then we're gonna bend it out with a heat gun. Okay, that that brings up the topic of a heat gun. We don't have a heat gun in the kit. Um, what do we do for a heat gun? you guys hear me okay there you are um, go right into the dock that I'm looking at so you guys can edit there can you hear me guys can you hear me can you hear me Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Tom, can you hear me? Tom, you seem to be... Tom, are you there? So, it seems like Tom has... Okay. Um, um, sees a muted symbol on my icon. I, I think he means me, but Mm. 
Um, I don't know what can I say. Um, I'll um, well tell Tom to go into the Google Doc that I'm doing there. Tom, take a look at this. Oh, I hear some noise now. Okay, can you hear, can me? You hear me now? Yeah. yeah. What happened? I don't know. Uh, I, I saw everybody's microphone is muted and every, nobody could talk. Hmm. Okay. Andy said you could talk to him. Yeah. Okay, so go into the, click the link in there, the power panel design. So what I'm thinking is the, so a 15 inch by 6 inch 3D printed panel, 4D printed, that means we printed vertically and then you have three, two bends in it so you can fold it out with a heat gun. Uh, but we don't have a heat gun, so we kind of have to figure that out. Tom, do you have a heat gun at your place there? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have that. Um, wondering how we handle that. I guess whoever's hosting that event, they should probably bring a heat gun. And uh, it's pretty quick. It's like a 30 seconds per panel or minute per panel. So yeah. it should be one, one heat gun should be decent. Oh, yeah, we need a heat gun. So we fold it out. It's going to be like 15 by 6 inches. So like 5 inch, 5 inch, 5 inch fold it out. And so probably that size for the length. You see the duck, me moving that around, yeah? yeah okay so what i'm thinking is so then we're going to mount components on it and what I, i'm thinking is just simple little holes just put holes in it like a perforated board so basically a large so i'll, I'll just oversize them for now but this panel is going to be riddled, riddled with holes like a like a perf board they're going to be uh -huh. like one quarter inch, um, more than a quarter inch, maybe like a half inch. No, maybe like three eighths inch. So how are components going to be connected on the back side? Say what? How are components going to be connected on the back side? How are they going to be connected? Yeah. Uh, I would say that we mount, mount circuit boards on top of that. Mount circuit boards. and terminals and components through the quick attach so do you see what I'm talking about with these quick attach holes does it make sense not exactly okay so no. I guess that's just where all the wiring sticks to all the connections and terminals. No, uh, let me go to D3D Universal because I have that catted up for what we're doing. Like, for example, with the rod holder, it's the same mechanism. So it's a snap-in thing. Okay, so it's this thing. Copy image. So you see that thing? It's a... It's a peg with a slit, and you put that in a hole. Yeah. So now this peg on the other okay, side so of the it peg... Snaps in. Huh? Say what? So it snaps in, then. Yeah, snap in. So snap in all so the components. So it snaps in. Yeah, yeah. snaps in but is this going to be the electrical connector no 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 it's just a structure it's a holder it's okay. a it's a structure insulated structure so for example what happens um, when you put a terminal on top of it so so for example what does a terminal look like so you'll have a 3d printed terminal with a set screw so say that's the terminal and on the bottom of it you're gonna have the this like a little you're gonna have that on the bottom of it so you can snap it into a hole 
when you put two two square terminals mm -hmm. next to each other, they're gonna lock together, and you can make that you know make the whole terminal strip on a pan or pa power panel with it, right? So does that start to make sense now, or no? So this could be a terminal, well, kind of, uh, a terminal block. Uh, another one could be like mount the Arduino on top of that. So put a like a three D printed Arduino holder, put the Arduino on it. Okay, so uh, now the Arduino is going to be a DIY Arduino, right? Yeah. If it's a DIY Arduino, we should print that right on a th with with a 3D printed holder built into it. If the the circuit board for the Arduino is 3D printed, but that mm. can't be. That's got to be the, the the strip board. It can be, but nah, not now. Um, Ar so Arduino with a plastic holders, for example. Now, what do you what do we do for the power elements like the MOSFET? So we would mount like a. Um, let's detail these out. Let's do a detailed, more detailed picture on the next page. So, for example, for the the IGBT with fan and heat sink, what would that look like? So let's go on the next page. So slide, duplicate, slide. Um, so let's take the Arduino element, for example. What do we call these pegs? Like the snap, snap pegs, quick pegs. Quick peg. That sounds good. Connected yep. to an Arduino <coughs> holder board. Um, a 3D printed. Okay, so what would that look like? So let's draw that out. So here I'm going to just do the free draw polyline. So you'd have the peg. The peg looks like this. Do you see me real time as I draw or I have to finish the drawing first? No, I don't see anything. Okay, so let me finish the drawing. Okay, so see that? That's an Arduino holder, isn't it? With the peg on the bottom. Okay. And then you put mm -hmm. the Arduino in there. Mm. That's the Arduino. <laughs> nice. And that snaps into your power power board. So that's an example of an Arduino element. What does a MOSFET element look like? Oh, IGBT power power element holder. So we'll have something similar. So you can do this. Um, well, let's draw it again because it'll be a different geometry. So let's take. Um, you want to hold a fan, heat sink, and more there, right? So what would that be like? I'm gonna copy that. Yeah, no, that's that's the thing I'm curious about is the the wiring going between the IGBT and the rest of the circuit. Okay, let's draw that out. Um, so that that needs to be a pretty heavy gauge wire. Okay, <clears throat> so let let's do that. Um, so if that's a heavy wire on that, we might want to connect it on two pegs to begin with. So let's draw two pegs. Um, well, let's draw them next to each other like this. Um, what next? We need to hold, so the, what gauge wire You're are basically we basically going to hold the, the IGBT? Heat yeah, you'll basically just, just hold a heat sink and fan assembly, and then the IGBT will just be on there.
Okay, so maybe like a, a vertical piece of plastic. Onto that, you put in your heat sink. Um, with IGBT. And then how do we connect the wires? The wires are soldered to the term terminals. Right. Or how do we do it? What, what I would suggest doing is I would suggest like so these are completely modular and you can plug and play them with easy wiring. What I would do there is actually add two terminals. So add a terminal and a terminal for power. And then you can solder that connection to there, but then you can have a quick connector to external wiring. So now you can have plug and play wiring. How's that? Does that make sense? Um, so we're talking about having a connector to connect to the IGBT? Well, you solder a wire to the I So, okay, let's detail that. So you got like the scribble. So you say you have the IGBT there with its three legs how's that that's the IGBT okay uh, that's gonna have a power wire that's soldered to it like that and like that and that goes to the terminal right but then from the terminal, you have quick connection ability, right? So that's, I would see that happening. Now you need the third leg, so a small terminal, so a signal terminal, right? So maybe do like a small terminal on the other side. And you can connect to that. You think this makes sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, let's do something like that. And that, you know, we can print that out. So print the structure. You have a ready place, like with the holes already for the heat sink mounting. Um, you use screws to mount the heat sink and the IGBT mounts on a screw with that. And you got this, so something like that. And then these become modular mm -hmm. and you can have like 10 of them for 200 amps. Right, so this becomes- So, so you're gonna have, uh, uh are you, are you gonna have the files for for printing these things ready so that we? Yeah, yeah. I'll print, print them print out, them out like within a week. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. Like I'll I'll do that. Um, probably yeah. By by next week I'll print them out and. But let's see. Do you want you get your hands on that? Like maybe I. I mean I can, ship them to you. Like maybe I I should do that like today and tomorrow, and ship these out to you. So so maybe design them today and ship them ship them to you right? Because I think this is pretty. Uh, Pretty interesting. Do you do you want to get your hands on these, like right now? Yeah, definitely. Okay, definitely. So let me um, let me work on this then. After the meeting, I'll I'll design the the power like a simple power board with these plug-in connectors, and ship mm -hmm. you some like on Monday or something. Yeah. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, and then I'll do the Arduino one. I'll do um. Uh, the IGBT. What other ones do we need? So we've got simple terminal blocks, Arduino holders, IGBTs. What else? There's a holder for a uh, for uh, uh, there's going to be another one that's a rectifier. What else? Right. Does a rectifier need rectifier. a heat sink? Now, now, are you seeing each component is being a separate plug-in or yeah. what? Yeah, modular. Because I was thinking, uh, for you know, the uh, if you look at the circuit that I had, yeah. you know, that has a zener diode and resistors yeah. in it and stuff like that, it, it's got a few different pieces to it. Okay, but that we and want to those, do. I mean, it's it, well for for that's like a circuit, right? So make that one module. Don't don't like uh, put it on a right. So instead of um, having the Arduino there, you have a circuit for uh, what like a. What kind of circuit is that? What yeah, just just a control circuit for the IGBT. Okay. IGBT control circuit, basically like the gate drivers and stuff. 
and resistors? Right. Okay. So IGB right. control circuit. Uh, what other kinds of little little modules can we make? Um, now, the, the, there is a little bit of a difference between the light dimmer application and the, the welder application. So those may be two separate boards. And, and then also, we were talking about doing a battery charger too. Yeah. But now, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you're talking about this other guy that has a, yeah. all this experience with cars and battery chargers and all well, that. Well, let's look at the, the curriculum. What are we expected for? Let, let's see what we wrote there. Let's just use that as a guide. Um, we put the battery charger on there explicitly. Okay. Well, did we? Let's see. Learning program. They it says uh, DC motor controller and charger. That's DC on motor day four. controller. Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> DC motor controller and charger. Okay, so for a charger, we don't want um, the charger concept. So what we want is the ability to pulse a DC input to charge something like a like a lithium battery. Now we're not talking about advanced features like equalization on every cell, right? We're talking about just like okay, here's a concept, proof of concept. So basically, you're switching a DC load and you're feeding that into say a single or a, or a string of the batteries right so we have our batteries uh -huh. in the kit we are we are buying the professional off the shelf single each battery equalizing circuits cuz <laughs> we got to be able to charge those batteries reliably uh for the right. experiment we could do what we can do is probably take that string and show that we can still charge it uh, but with a different mechanism so does any of our other circuits cover that application does the welder circuit cover that application um, yeah you mean the battery charger yeah <clears throat> I mean it, it could be adapted for it I mean you'd have to just change your PWM output uh, no, no, it would be the light dimmer would be most similar to the battery charger, right? Because it takes the external 110 volts and it, uh, you know, uses that to, to do the light bulb, which you, that, that again, you would use that to charge batteries with. But the, the welder uses the batteries to do the, it, uh, as a power source. Right. So, that's so be a different do you think that... Um, do you think that we can take the rectified AC for the battery charger application for 22 volt charging? I think you have to, because I mean that's that's going to be your application. You charge you, you you plug the battery charger in the wall and then plug the batteries into the charger. Okay, so that's yeah. Um, but remember that gets into your issue of that the 120 uh, instantaneous, right? Can we address that? Uh, we'll have to do either some some filtering or use a use a transformer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's figure out how to do. It. Uh, light, bulb, uh, light bulb doesn't require any filtering. Yeah, light bulb doesn't require light bulb any filtering. Can take, can take the full yeah. Um, right. Um, can we do, in order to smooth out the 120 peaks, would a single capacitor do it or like a couple of capacitor and resistor combo do it? You, you know, to do a battery charger, I'd, I'd much prefer using a transformer. Just something that would scale the voltage down and also another important thing is it gives you electrical isolation. From yeah, the it line. does, but okay, so are, we adding a trans so are we adding a transformer to our, our kit then? Yeah, I would like to do that. Either a transformer, well, 
I don't know how you'd feel about uh, uh, switching power supply, one of those little switching power supplies that would go from wall current to... Um, oh, do you have then a... Then you're talking about mind? basically a battery charger. Uh, do you have a particular transformer? Because you know those little bricks... You, yeah, you know those little bricks that you yeah. get for charging your, your laptop or whatever? You know yeah. those things have little switching uh, uh, power supplies in them, and, and yeah. they... They actually they they mass produce them and they're just as cheap as buying a big transformer and they're they're lighter and you know have yeah okay so can you put into the the bill of materials on the the D three the OSC dev kit can you add the transformer there okay okay um, so that would address the charger so we're going we're gonna go to like 24 volts and then take that down to 22 through the something like that like f once we get to yeah, 24 would, uh, we take it. And the cool thing is that you could you could uh, get one of those uh, that, that scales it either to one and it will automatically adapt for whatever input you're getting and then you can have a known output okay okay so let's look and in, look into that yep yeah and then the last so that last thing the the motor control circuit if we have the 555 motor do you think that can handle instantaneous 110 120 or 240 or once I, again we need I, a transformer I, I, for 555 motor is, is that a stepper motor or what no that's that's a s small uh, look at the bill of materials but that's one of those regular motors that they put into drills and things like that it's a like a 10, 20, 30 watt motor. Just a little DC motor that runs on 24 volts. So to control it, we can use the, if we have the, the transformer, we could do that. But other than that, would the light, I'm, I'm questioning whether the light control circuit would also do it. Now, see, okay, we have for the. I'd like to see uh, the motor controller, but I mean, we can cheat and simply say, okay, we're going to run that off the battery packs, and therefore our welder controller is going to be more than enough to function as a motor controller, right? Uh huh. Is that so? Um. <coughs> I'll just run it directly straight off of batteries. So then, then your, your voltage is already scaled down. Well, oh, yeah, but we're talking about a con speed controller, so so then we do the the speed control part, right? Maybe just do that. Just do it out of twenty four. Yeah. Yeah, that that would work. Let's just do that. That's really simple. E either mm -hmm. e either that, or if we did did get a transformer for the battery charger, we could just run it off of that transformer. Okay. Too. Okay. Okay, so motor controller circuit. Plus with um, with either batteries or transformer. Okay, that sounds great. So is this going to be a, a power supply for the printer itself or for or just for the no 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 the printer's coming with power supply right we we got the power supply for the printer i mean we could use that one but right. that means we took the power supply from the printer that's a 24 volt power supply oh yeah actually we could do that we could use that that output and then control that with our circuit what if we do that uh then we don't and then would that one maybe if Wait that was about the right voltage, we could use it to charge the batteries too. It's a 24 volt, so it is the right voltage. Yeah. Um, yeah. the The only question is, like, do we want to do that? Because then we're taking the printer out of commission, and the printer is probably printing stuff. Yeah. No, it probably. Probably want to go separate. It it could be done, and that's that's something we can show that hey, you can actually use this power supply too to do that. Maybe we do that as an experiment. But no, we most of the time we're gonna have the printers running, printing stuff. So yeah, so and, yeah. And also, if you have a 24 volt power supply, 
it, it, you, if you're tra trying to charge 24 volt batteries, you need a little bit more than 24 volts yeah, to charge. Yeah, they're with. 22 volt batteries for a 6x 6s, six times 3.7. Okay. Uh -huh. Six times 3.7 equals 22.2 volts at full charge. So I think 24 should be good. Um, so 24 volt transformer should be good. And if it isn't, we would take out what, what? one battery. Yeah. You said it's six six times what? 3.7. 3.7? Okay. Yeah, that's lithium ion battery. And that's for the battery pack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it would be good to show that okay. we can control that motor, little motor with um, little transformer batteries. I mean, that's going to be a cool experiment to show that okay, you got your Arduino and you're programming it and you're actually using these power elements and then you can show that, hey, this can actually scale to much more power, which we're showing through the welder, actually right so for the welder oh mm -hmm. look at this tom what we should do is actually get some fat electrodes too and uh what we should do is stack a couple of these power panels or have a power panel where multiple people's igbt with fan heatsink modules so the welder the, the power modules we just plug in a ton of them and we get like a 400 amp welder <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends how many people we have uh, for battery packs, but each battery pack gets us 50, um, up to 45 amps for, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Each battery pack only gets you like 15 sustainably. Uh, so you need three people for 45. Uh, if we got 12 people, you got like 200 amps. But yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. But we can scale to as many uh, people as are participating. Anyway, the cool thing about this is that when we make these little modules, ideally we'd be able to mm -hmm. control them. The, the question is how many can, can you make one Arduino control a bunch of them? Oh uh, yeah, you're, you're talking the same PWM output. Right, so you take that output yeah. and through your little gate circuit, you just connect it to like up to get 10 or 20 gate circuits. How many gate circuits can you drive with one Arduino? The the gate uh, power to drive a gate is very small. It's only like uh, less than ha uh, half of a microamp. So so you Ooh. can you can drive a bunch of them with one Arduino. Oh great! Sounds like you can do like a hundred of them. So we were talking about using that in between transistor to do that anyway. You know, right. the driving transistor. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be your. Um, we probably want to make a IGBD control circuit. Yeah, that's in the IGBD. We need, so we need a gate driver circuit. We, we, we yeah, we would need a gate terminal on the on the board so that we could co you know connect the gates to you know to the one Arduino. Right. So you're saying on page five, you you need that. You're talking about this one here, what I just uh, highlighted in red? Page five. <laughs> An Arduino has uh, six uh, pins that can be used as a, a PWM output. Okay. Um, so. I suppose you're gonna. Yeah, but we're talking about multiplexing a single output, right, Tom? Taking one output and driving a bunch of yeah. IGBTs with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you can even multiply it by six. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. Great. Um, okay, so what I'll do is, yeah. Um, Tom, you get the picture. What we have to do here now is make sure. So I need the. Make sure you document your great. Let's see. I mean, let me see what I can find on your log. Do you have the gate driver circuit there? Or where it, is it's that? in my. Uh, it's in my document. Wherever the thing is. Oh, okay. So the one you just showed. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, it's the same as the uh, incandescent light bulb. The, the gate driver circuit is pretty much the same. The the 500K resistor is going to change to about uh, 40K, I think. The gate driver is... Sorry, repeat that. The, the one resistor that's a 500K resistor that's on top of that 17-volt Zener diode, that, that resistor changes to about 40K. In which cases? Because I... It, from which case to which yeah, case? this 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 five five hundred k one that 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 was for the worst case, which is two hundred forty volts AC rectified. But if we're driving it from twenty four volt power packs, then you know, then it. Are you talking about? Okay, I'm not clear what you're discussing. You're discussing the K, the difference between the welder circuit versus the motor control circuit. Well, I'm 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 looking at at, at seven. You you, you on, on that uh, circuit diagram, there's a 500k resistor in there. Uh, now I'm saying is that would change in value. Okay, but hold on. What what are you look? Send a link to what you're looking at. Not, what page? What document? Uh, okay. I'm seeing this uh, Change. light dimmer case where you show the the, the gate driver there. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, so it's number seven use yeah. case one light dimmer. Yep. Okay. And where the Arduino, the output pin, pin six of the Arduino goes into one transistor. Yep. The output of that goes to that 17 volt Zener into a 500k uh, resistor, but that. All I'm saying is that 500k resistor will change. Where's the sense? Instead of having an incandescent light bulb, we'd, we'd drive the, um, what is it, the motor, or battery pack, whatever. Yeah, yeah, Where's the output of the welder, right? All right, where, I don't know what you're talking about. Is Zener diode in there? I don't see any Zener diode in there in the diagram. You see, you see 17V? There's a diode there. It has 17V? Uh, two volts. Okay, let me paste in what, what I'm it's, looking at. It, 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 it has a 17 volt thing. It, it, it's uh, across the output of the transistor, the first transistor. There it is. Still don't see okay, it. okay, hold on a second. There's document conflict. I'm looking at your Arduino Power Electronics tutorial and you have a different document in there. Is the Arduino Power Control tutorial still relevant okay let's, um, okay hold on a second we're we're confusing versions this is okay I'm looking at Arduino power electronics tutorial is that an outdated document okay okay let's okay I'm going to Tom log let's identify the current working doc let's stop right there Tom log yeah, this one is called instructional on PWM power control okay let me see if that's the last link on your log, because I think it is. Yeah, it's the link that I just sent to you in, in the Jitsi. Can you share the doc? I just asked for share permissions on the last document on your log. Is that the same document or a different document? I just want to recognize well, it, it, It's the one that I... I sent I sent it to you in the Jitsi in this yeah, this yeah. No, I see that thing. one, but I'm trying to reconcile so that I don't ask you in the future. Like, uh, yes, I see that. That's good. Can we oh, solve okay. what the last document is on your log? First, share that the permissions oh, okay. on that. Oh, okay. Um, let me go see where my log is. I got too many windows open, man. Uh, Tom log, Tom log. Okay, so probably this is uh, this may be outdated or not. Okay, this thing. So let's cross it. That's instructional.
Michelle, you, you see the comment, on the the plugin uh, elements. You follow that? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, Arduino Power Electronics tutorial. Yeah. Is it the last slide in the Steam Camp for uh, Day Four curriculum? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, a little plug in elements to to a three D printed board. So, and there's a bunch of holes. So it's like a large large scale perf board with plug in components. And and it has plugs too to to stack them or. Uh, the plugs go into each of the holes, but I'll I'll send it over by uh. I'll work well, on it in the next uh, day or two. I can't okay. visualize it that good uh, three-dimensionally. Uh, mm -hmm. Tom, are you trying to open the doc? Yeah, I've got it open. I see what you're talking about. There, there is a. I'm still trying to request it, it, access. It seems to like it. there's. <clears throat> uh, can you open it on your log? I still can't get can't get access to it. Okay, uh, okay, here it is, advanced, public on the web, and anyone can edit, on public, anyone can edit. Uh, yeah, well, that I'm showing it, the power electronics, uh, it says on public on the web, and it says access anyone, no access required, anyone can edit, save. Um, can you open up the doc that's on the last entry on your log? Is that the one? That's just that's what I just did. Okay. When I click on it, it's, it still says request permission. Still don't have it. Okay, but let's. Okay. Let's say okay. I'll just yeah. If you can, uh, let's maybe not worry about it right now. Okay. But. Last on the January two. Entry the one you put there docs.google.com at the bottom yeah. of my January two page. Yeah, that's the one you opened okay. up. Well, um, I don't know. I'm gonna go just just make sure I, this is. Oh, it says it's private only to me. But I'm clicking, letting me change it. Oh, here it is. It was <laughs> having trouble reconnecting. Advanced, change. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. It was locked out. Anyone can edit, save. Now you should have access. Okay, got it. Okay, so that's the welder design doc, um, which is a separate. Okay, so what you got to do is link all these docs into the four day because you got you got the. Arduino, you got the welder, and I think you got a third dock, right? Is that I need to bring them all together. Is what I need to do. Yeah. Well, you can keep them in separate docks, but but just link to them from the master dock or whatever. Um, it's fine if uh -huh. they're separate, but but you got to have a master index. So that ma let's let's call the master index yeah. the day one through nine curriculum, the the five working docks. The, each one for the okay. each day, and then uh, one document for day five through nine. Okay, um, sounds good to me. Okay, so you got that um, battery pack, welding rod, IGBT, yeah, Zener diode. So, so if you have the IGBT module, like everything else around it, like that, there's gonna be, I guess. The gate driver circuit consists of those four elements around it. Is that so? And I yeah. Another pot. Um, you've got 
the Arduino with the pot, and, and you got that uh, a one transistor and a zener and a couple of okay. diodes. Yeah. Should we put the pot along with the Arduino, like on the Arduino board? Probably. So make it yeah. like the Arduino with a yeah. potentiometer. Yeah. As well. So that we have like our. But it, it's it's going to be. It's, or, or did you want that Arduino to be kind of like a module that would be general purpose? Yeah, it should be a general purpose module, but yeah. Um, but the potentiometer is yeah, used in all these experiments here, right? Right. So maybe just put them together? But when you, when you go to do it, it, let's say you go to do an Arduino and you're going to do something else for the different, you know, your next workshop, but you may want to do something other than have a pot yeah. go there. Yeah, maybe we do a pot module with on a separate stick, yeah? No. Uh -huh. Let's try that. I'm going to add that as another module. So pot module. Okay, and then... And then the Arduino board would have to... It would have to have connectors on it. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, screw down terminals yeah let's do screw down terminals that's the most or, or those or those little things we could plug wires into it either way screw, screw downs probably but have some of the little bitty screw downs yeah well we'd 3d print ones with one type of screw the four millimeter bolt we can get like six of them in a row uh, yeah? oh, okay, no. okay I'll, we have to kind of all to be decided um, the typical wire that we now, have is a... Now, now this, uh, this, this, uh, excuse me, well, this, this Arduino board, how are you going to supply power to it? 5 volt through a USB cord, the short USB cord. How, how are you going to program it? Are you going to have a USB interface or what? Yeah. Michel, we've got a USB thing, right? On it? For the DIY version? Uh, well... We, we have two possibilities. Uh, we can uh, provide uh, a connection uh, through USB, yep. but uh, the cables are quite expensive if you buy them and they're a bit tricky to make. But you can program, you can have like a, an Arduino Uno, and you just pr plug in the, the Atmega, program him, and then put him in the, the DIY uh, Arduino. Uh, just use the, the, the real Arduino to program the, the Mega. That's another possibility. Uh, okay, hold on a second. For the actual use Arduino, um, the one we're going to use for the experiments, that's going to have... What you want to do is do the, do the one... Yeah, I mean, okay, USB cords. But we have a ton of those USB cords that... that uh, I can ship out, but I mean each one of those we have a s bunch of spare USB cords that that probably would be good. Can we count on? Uh, you really want to use the USB. You want to make a functional Arduino, like one that's pretty practical. Um, I would do. Just do the the USB connection as that's in um that's in a design that we uh, we want to do linked to the specification. So do, let's do that. Uh, otherwise, we're mess. Can we do that? Yeah, we want to be able to program it without using uh, another board. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I think we're getting a little too complicated. Yeah, and then, then also the USB. Yeah. We we, we may have to. We may have to address differences in the way we program the thing because uh, you you want different programming for say a battery charger than a light dimmer than a welder. Yeah, so the USB yeah, USB port addresses that, right? Right. Yeah. So uh, let's let's do the USB. We're are not the about participants going to be uh, requested to bring a laptop with them? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's going to have a, a computer. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the core of this is FreeCAD, so you can't do FreeCAD without a laptop. Um, you can try bring some spares, but I don't really have a lot of spares. 
I think unless we find otherwise, I mean, I'm basically telling people to bring your computer, of course. Um, and, and, and with Lin OSC Linux already there, like I'm telling people to download OSC Linux before so that we have a better start. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Michelle, so let's, let's just make sure that in your thing you have that USB to, to serial converter board, right? That you're incorporating that into your circuit? Yeah, you need to use the USB to serial converter board for your DIY Arduino. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's a it's a cable with some uh, with some electronics in it. Uh, you can yeah, you can make them yourself, but uh, if you order them, they're like through Amazon, they're like fifteen dollars piece. Uh, that's why I thought like yeah if you buy a cheaper uh, Uno it's only fifteen dollars even even cheaper it's four dollars if you buy them at AliExpress and you can use them to program the the Mega chips um, yeah but I, I I prefer the cable too but uh, they're pretty expensive can and you a bit tricky to make so okay uh, for the next priorities. Document as much of the DIR Arduino, but are you following the spec that's on the? Okay, let me let me show you this. Let's just coordinate that, make sure we're on the same page with that. So we got the Steam Camp specifications. Okay, t um, Michelle, take a look at the last link. Are you following that specification? Where it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty. Oh, you got that USB, USB to serial, serial converter. converter. $1. Yeah. yeah, $1. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Where, where do we buy it? Uh, oh, everywhere. It's all in there. Follow the specification. So if you do an Arduino Uno, uh, everybody, the specifications for everything are, I don't know if everybody knows that, but um, let me put in, okay, let me put this link at the, at the day zero. There's a page on a wiki that contains Steam Camp module specifications. Uh, refer back to that for the integration of all the content, okay? Because everything fits together. So I'm going to put that on the day one of the day zero links. Okay, so the page is called Steam Camp Module Specifications. All right. Good, um, Tom. So, so let's just finishing up on um, power panel. Yeah, um, the, the the biggest challenge right now is to based on the circuits that you have. So, first of all, uh, please put all your. Are you able to put all your links into the working docs so I can collaborate? Right now, I actually don't didn't know that. Uh, well, I mean, let's paste it in right now. But yeah, please put everything into the the doc. Like, um, let's see, welder. Okay, okay. When, when you say, say into the doc, doc, you mean the that, that, that working doc, document, right? right? Uh, there's a there's a separate document for each day of the camp, and there's another document for the last five days of the camp. So these are the documents I'm talking about. Those are our master curriculum creation okay. documents. Okay. Yep. So I've okay. just put your welder design on the page three there. Uh, but I think you've got the light dimmer and other stuff. So, well, let's get that. So where's the light dimmer? Is that a separate doc or? Uh, uh, they're all in the same document, document I think. No, the initial welder design has only one page that I see. 
Oh, oh, oh right. okay. okay. I know what you mean. All right. Okay, so we got. Actually, I, I'll, 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 go, I'll get those straight. Yeah, put, put all those in there. Uh, I got the welder one. Uh, but do that like if you want me to start designing these things, I need to I need to see them. So please make sure they're all available. The one on let's see the one on your log. Let me see if I can get oriented. Okay, the one on your log is the initial welder design. Um, the last one, okay. And then Arduino, is the Arduino Power Electronics tutorial still relevant or did you supersede it with something else? Uh, it, it's kind of, um, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I have a duplicate duplication of documents there somewhere, so I need to consolidate those and just come out with, you know, one set. Okay. So, so what you're saying is I should put it on the, the day uh, yeah. two, day yeah. three, those, those documents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Get me all of that so I can design the modules accordingly. Uh, because how we design it wants to be the smartest for how we do all those four functions, the welder, the light dimmer, the motor controller, and charger, all with the same small number of modules that we can interchange. So it's literally this kind of like a like a switchboard <laughs> where we're plugging in different components for different applications. I know that we have to do the terminals. I kind of am pretty familiar <coughs> with um, IGBT module sounds transparent, but there's questions like what components does the gate driver have? Uh, bat charger yeah, pretty much like the the drive circuit. I think that's that's the question. How how are we going to drive these things? And and if we drive them with one circuit, can that circuit be the same for both, or do we actually have to change that circuit? So those are the, the outstanding questions there. That if I can look at all the uh, current designs, then we can see what's the best way to do it. Yeah, the one thing is the battery charger is going to have to change because it's going to have feedback. Uh, from current to know the current and voltage what the battery is doing. Yeah, yep. Right. So, um, so that needs feedback, whereas the the motor controller doesn't, right? Right, the light dimmer doesn't need right. it. Right. Now the welder, I mean, Probably it should, um, and, and it would be good to have that kind of feedback on a welder to do a, a hot start, and you know, so, you know, there's some, some nice things you can do with it. But we can add that later. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do a basic one, no feedback, just to show that we we can actually have a welder that we can control with voltage, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, sounds good. I think I, that's good. Yeah, I think uh, let's quit it here, maybe. So let's meet again on yeah, Wednesday. We, we all have plenty to work on. Okay, all got plenty to work on. So let's check in Wednesday on where the curriculum is. And uh, regarding the calendar, uh, oh shit, the post office is closed already. Um. Right, so so the, the, to summarize on the materials, the final ship to the international people is the, the 10th. Final ship to the U.S. is the 17th. So I got to make sure that's happening. So basically between now and the 10th, there's a bunch of shipping that has to happen. Um, we can do content practice on the 8th. Probably want to do content Well, next team meeting. Uh, content practice on the 15th. Uh, now the build practice sounds like the 22nd, a few days before the event. No, but we should do mm -hmm. it like Monday, the 20th. How's that? Uh, be weird. Uh, 
in advance. Does 20 look good for that? Mm -hmm. Build practice. So that means what? It means everyone will have to have parts. Is that realistic? Um, the Belgium is troublesome. And you want to do complete builds? Yeah. Well, let's see. What do we want to get there? Um, are you going to be practicing your... Are you going to be building a universal before that? And Chris has already, I think, built one. We don't necessarily have to go through that. I'm pretty confident we, we know how to do that. The more important part for that is getting the, the accurate instructionals. Uh, are you planning on doing a build uh, before the 20th? Uh, yeah, if, if I get all the, the parts together. Yeah. I have some motors, but not to the right specifications, but I don't know if that really matters for the universal. Yeah. The motor. If they work, then they work, yeah. I mean, you gotta be strong enough. So, uh, Yep. Um, yeah, I'm gonna uh, do it with things I have. Uh, yeah. Have Rams board laying around and yeah. Build practice is more about the other parts, everything else. So um, uh, don't necessarily need to walk through the practice of run of building the universal because we know how to do it. Um, but we do need you to do make sure you do do that before like every one of us has a complete working version right that we definitely want to yeah. verify uh, as far as all the other experiments how are we going to get those parts in time um i would need to ship more like the eighth for you to get all the parts in time <laughs> so that means we got to probably make that sh international sh the instructorship well yeah I said it's the sixth already well yeah that's about right but that ain't happening uh, it's gonna be like seventh or eighth um, if we ship out the eighth one two three four five you should get it by the fifteenth so we should be in good for the twentieth um, so essentially, yeah, like really, uh, I'm going to shoot for shipping on the 8th to the instructors and build practice on the 20th. Does it sound right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so sounds good. Yeah, uh, you said you were going to send me some, uh, those, those printed little circuit yeah. boards earlier. Yeah. I want to send that to you like Monday. Okay. okay. Ship to Tom. It's already designed, uh, the circuit boards. Of course not. <laughs> we got the concept design. <laughs> well, we got the concept design, and I, I've got the I've got the actual plug-in element designed. That's a big part of it. Yeah, uh, we basically got to design the holders and everything. What's uh, uh, Michelle? What size of the the Strip board, are you using for the DIY Arduino? Because that's and I was just going into that. Uh, it's the DIY Arduino that I was working on. It's like a very small, basic, uh, it's, a, it's not the same fa form factor as the, the normal Uno. No, you gotta make uh, it the same, man. Do it the same. Oh, yeah, I just saw it on the on documents that you wanted, like the same. That you can put on the shields. Yes. And that was the, the next step that I was going to look into is, uh, yeah, just like having connectors in the right place for the shields. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to look into that. That it's the same form factor. But the thing is, uh, yeah. That the TTL connection is there also. Right, now. right. S same sm form factor. Now, what the strip board comes in standard size, right? So what is that size? Do we know that, or no? Different sizes. Oh, they have all kinds uh, of different uh, sizes. Here it's, it's about 100, uh, 100 millimeters. Okay. Uh, it's the, it's uh, 39 rows of uh, one tenth of an inch. 
Yeah. Okay. So do you have a link for the one you got? What's the link for that? Do you have that offhand? Oh yeah, actually, it's in a. It's it's already in our. I should have that in my my uh, bill of materials. Let's see. Uh, let's actually see if we both have the same one. So, uh, bill of materials. Yeah, well, you just break them. You, you cut them with a knife and break them at the right size. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm thinking like, let's use the standard one so we don't even have to cut it. Okay, the one I'm looking at right here, that size, uh, let me actually paste the link, see if that's the same thing you're using. Uh, so take a look at that link, is that what you also have or yours is different? Because that's like... Ah, oh, it's longer than an Arduino. It looks uh, like, but uh, ver Vero board, yeah. But uh, you have you have different uh, different kinds. You have uh, like with the squares, and then with uh, the, the complete. Uh, I buy those with the complete strips, and then you you can cut the strips at certain points. Yeah, this what I linked to you has got the complete strips. Isn't that the same thing? Yeah. Uh, well, they're like two sorts on, um, on yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's complete strips, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, we're talking the Vero board. Vero board is the particular thing we want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah. a certain brand, uh, they have it from different brands also. Okay. Called strip board. Well, they, board, strip board, uh, well, you kind of got to be careful because we, you don't want, well, the only distinction we need to make is strip volt board versus proto board, correct? Like. Like the ones that don't have the lines, right? Um, you have um, pad, pad boards also. Pad, pad boards. boards is like uh, just like um, copper dots. Then you have to connect all the the, the, uh, the spots. Don't have oh, the that's called strips. pad board. Okay, that's pad uh, board. Yeah, it's pad okay. board. I, I think. Uh, okay. I never worked. With and strip board do you like if you say strip board that should be exactly what we're looking at the vero board right because that's got the strips and the holes yeah. yeah yeah okay uh so is the one you're getting the same size or is it a different size two four six eight ten twenty not sure what it is but yeah we need to basically cut off a section of that like probably slice i Ideally, if we slice it in half, that's just the size of an Arduino Uno, but I have to take a look at that. I don't know what the size is. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Have to we have to, um, like for the 3D printed one, I'll, I think we can uh, shake down that size. Because uh, I think these strip boards are pretty standard, right? Or no? You're saying they come in all kinds of sizes? They come in different sizes. Okay. All right. Well, if you can, uh, let's let's put all the ones under consideration into the curriculum doc, so we keep track of that. Okay. Yeah, let's put that in there. Because um, a lot of this is like understanding materials, so we can actually teach about that. Like, okay, here's all the different versions you got. Here's what we're using. Blah blah. blah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Tom. I plan on shipping you some 3D printed um, power board components on Monday. Then we'll ship th uh, Wednesday. We ship the. I I think we got to pretty much get all the sh kits out to everybody, uh, including the actual build okay, kits, that, real builds. That was mm -hmm. good. Okay, let's let's finish here. That's a long meeting, but I think. Um, had to go through all this material. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sounds good. And then we'll, let's meet again on uh, the eighth, one p.m. One p.m. on the eighth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tom, okay. Tom, you're uh, able to make it. 
Um, I will do my best. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'll probably have to do it do it from work. So you know, come and go. I won't be able to spend hours and hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's a wait, uh, a little video that they showed the the difference between breadboards, padboards, stripboards, and more. Okay. So I'm just gonna give hmm. you this link. Um, yeah. Maybe it can be interesting mm -hmm. to see different types. Okay, great. Martin, will you need me for the next meeting or otherwise I just focus on the No, uh, no, I think I think you're fine. That's that'll be fine. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just let me know. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah, sounds good, guys. So, yeah, let's finish here and um, we'll talk on Wednesday, yeah? Okay. See you then. Okay. 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 Good. Thank you. All right. Nice meeting you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Bye.